is Fox Sports South. Today in beautiful new Gibbs Stadium here in Spartanburg, South Carolina, as the Southern Conference welcomes their newest member, Walford College, on this week's game of the week. The Terriers going up against VMI and the Cadets. Hello again, everybody. Sam Smith along with Chip Tarkington, and you can feel the excitement. A new member coming in, a new stadium. Certainly Spartanburg is alive. No question. These students are fired up. They've been here for a couple of hours now. <laughs> the whole student body is wound up. All the players are wound up. We're ready to play some football. Wofford will be the newest member. VMI is the oldest member in the Southern Conference coming in back in 1924. Interesting enough, that was the first of nine games. The two teams played against each other. VMI holds a 9-0 advantage there. Let's look at our U.S. Airways keys to the game, starting with the Cadets of EMI. Well, the Cadets of EMI with a brand new offense must avoid any turnovers. Coach Ted Keene says they must keep it simple. They've got to keep from making any big mistakes. The other thing they have to do is keep the football, hold on to it, move up and down the field and keep their defense off the field. That's what Ted Keene wants. He doesn't want the defense on the field very much. The Wofford wing bone offense is a ball control offense and that plays right into their favor. Surely does and they need to have sustained drives. They need to hold on to the football and they need to make some things happen offensively. Defensively, they cannot afford to turn over with the big plays. They allowed some big plays last year. If they do that, VMI will have a good chance to win. Well, the excitement of joining the conference, opening up the stadium, certainly for Walford, but VMI playing without the illustrious Thomas uh, Haskins. A couple of keys we'll watch today. Chip and I'll take our spot. Stick around for Southern Conference football and the kickoff in a moment. Welcome back to Spartanburg, South Carolina, where Fox Sports South presents the Southern Conference Game of the Week. Southern Conference football is being brought to you by U.S. Airways, official airline of the Southern Conference. By Interstate Johnson & Lane. By Reebok, the official shoe and apparel of the Southern Conference. And by the Greensboro Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. A sun-drenched afternoon has greeted Walford College on their first game ever in the Southern Conference. They get ready to make their first appearance on this field. VMI will follow. Matt Swartad is our third voice on the broadcast. Let's go downstairs to get his assessment of today's kickoff. Well, thanks, Sam. And as you said, it is a beautiful day here in Spartanburg. 85 degrees and sunny. And speaking of this field, it is a new field here at Gibbs Stadium. It is probably one of the best, if not the best, in the Southern Conference. The whole playing facility and all the football facilities are top-notch. And the reason being, one reason, the NFL's Carolina Panthers. You see, the Panthers, they train here at Wofford in Spartanburg during the summer times. And owner Jerry Richardson, he wanted the best for his Panthers no matter what time of year it was, championship time or training camp time. And because of that, Wofford has benefited tremendously. This game, Wofford and VMI, they haven't met since 1992. VMI holds a 9-0 edge, but there's a lot of excitement, of course, surrounding Wofford's first game of the Southern Conference. But I'll tell you one thing, guys, no matter what happens today, the VMI Kedats will not be lying down and rolling over for the Wofford Terriers. It's going to be a good one. Let's go back upstairs. Well, they're hoping to let the big dog bark here in Spartanburg. And, Chip, you can kind of feel that excitement of the teams being introduced to starters. First of all, for Wofford, you can feel it from their administration, their players, their coaches, and certainly this uh, fan of the cut number up to eight or 9,000 today. Well, you know, they've had this date circled on the calendar since the last game last year against the Citadel where they came up with a big victory late in the football game. And I can guarantee to you. They've been talking about this first game against BMI, first conference game since that game ended. They're ready to play football here. Wofford College is the smallest Division I, Division I AA club in the country. They enrollment of only 1,100 students here in Spartanburg. One of the other small colleges around the country is VMI with 1,300 there in Roman. Both these clubs expected to feel quite an outing today with a lot of question marks to be answered. Walford College, can they compete on this level? They've done well going 3-3 three and three against the six teams they played so far in the Southern Conference. VMI holding that 9-0 advantage has to play now with that Thomas Haskins. That was their offensive last year. No question, and it's a brand new offense with Ted Kane this year. You won't see VMI take the ball and hand it to the tail 
tailback 35 times a game. The quarterbacks now are going to have to do some more things. You'll see a lot more passing. You'll see a lot more backs in the backfield who have to carry some of the weight of the load of this offense. Well, the two running backs who will get a majority of the running will be Hopkins and Bean. But uh, look for the fullback, Jason White, also to figure in the offensive scheme. And a big question, though, is Al Lester, their quarterback. How long does he run the offense before a young freshman by the name of Robbie Chenault takes over for Ted Kane at VMI? Well, I'm going to tell you, that they've got a, a, a real good problem to have. Two quarterbacks. That's right. I mean, two good quarterbacks. Robbie Chenault is going to be an outstanding quarterback for VMI. Al Lester, you mentioned, he started every football game that he's played at VMI. 33 straight starts. They've never had anyone at the quarterback position to do that. You know he's a good player, but it's a nice problem to have for Ted Kane to come into a situation where he doesn't have to worry about his quarterbacks. You know, interesting enough, Mike Ayers has a similar situation in the fact that Davis, along with their starting quarterback today, Smothers, have kind of alternated. Smothers uh, playing the last eight games last year, going five and three. Davis beating him out, then getting an injury, and Smothers is back in. But Coach Ayers said he will not uh, fear to pull the trigger on making a change there either. Well, Brad Smothers, as you mentioned, he played eight games last year, started eight games. Brian Davis was questionable as to whether he will play. He's dressed out, and we've been told if they need him to go, he will get in there. But you'll see a lot of people in the backfield for Wofford. They rotate a lot of their backs. Well, we're going to talk offense for VMI first as they have won the toss of the coin, and they will indeed take this football here in this opening period. And as we pointed out, the brilliant sunshine, and there's a good look at Ted Kane coming home, so to speak. Aiken, South Carolina, where he was born. He coached eight years at Furman after playing there and in 11 years at North Carolina State before matriculating himself to VMI. This is Mike Ayers, a former conference player uh, as far as a coach is concerned at East Tennessee State University. That was 10 years ago. He's been at Walford ever since. One thing Ted Kane says, Mike Ayers has his system and he knows what to do with it and his players know how to execute. It's going to be fun. I can't wait. You know, thank goodness football's finally here. It's September. Let's play. We have waited long enough. Wofford will be kicking off. They'll be defending the goal to our immediate right. And kicking off for the Terriers will be Matt Martin. Back deep will be the duel for VMI. They will try to return with Jackson and Frost back on the goal line. And the Southern Conference race is underway. At the five. They try to move it ahead to the 26-yard line. And get a nice run back that time by VMI. And they'll go first and ten. Again, they'll move it out to the 27-yard line. VMI cadets with a run back that time by Hopkins, who lines up as the uh, tailback in the offense. Here's something fun to watch already is that VMI is going to huddle off to the side of the field and come right on the field, right to the line of scrimmage. And it'll be interesting to see how they negotiate that with the 25-second play clock. It is down to 16 as they come to the line of scrimmage. Again, the quarterback starting today for VMI is Lester. Tall, angular quarterback at 6'4". He turns and throws. Swings it left side to Holland. Richard will not get out of the grass down that line of scrimmage, though. Of the uh, quarterback on that side, Rob Steen, who drops him virtually for no gain on the play. Well, that's great defense there. Imperative for Wofford to get off to a good start. The emotion obviously is going to be high. Look at the play again. A little old counter fake. Throw it back to the other side, trying to catch the linebackers going in one direction, and then there's nowhere to go. Fine defense by Wofford. A lot of people in pursuit. Second down, virtually 10 yards still to go. They stack the eye now. Turn and pitch it. This is Hopkins. And he fights for yardage out to the 30-yard line, but it's going to be a third down play, and LCL need about seven yards. Interesting about VMI today, Chip, is the fact that, yes, they will run the football, but without Hopkins, uh, excuse me, Haskins, how much? They're trying to get Lester to throw it more, and Chenault, the backup quarterback, may be the man that gets him in the run in the passing game. Well, and they've changed the drop back steps. Instead of a seven-step drop back, it's now a five-step. That changes a lot, and, you know, Al Lester is used to doing that seven steps. A lone running back in the backfield, Jason White, the fullback. Motion along the line of scrimmage, drawn off. Are not, the officials will officially make the call. By the way, our referee today is Ron Buckner, and hopefully he will not be a busy man along with his crew, which, by the way, number seven for the first time in the Southern Conference with an additional back judge to kind of watch what's happening there. They'll be glad to have the extra eyes, too. They will. You heard the call going offense on the motion. Back it up five, brings up a third down, and now 12. Does it automatically become a passing down for VMI? What do they do on a change here? They had set up that way on the previous play. Let's see if they just hold Pat with that. 
Lester. It's a fake as he's drawn, and he's got running room to the outside. Finally caught and drugged down from the right-hand side, and again, there could be a face mask penalty as well as Lester. Was it a design fake, or was he looking and had trouble? I think it might have been a set quarterback draw. Coach Ted Kane had mentioned the fact that he'd go to a one-back offense. They had three receivers on the right side of the field, and as Lester was dropping back, it looked like, hey, he was going to be able to make the run, and I think it was a draw. You see the face mask call right there, and that'll be a big, big, big first down for VMI. Much to the chagrin of Mike Ayers, his club, by the way, was penalized over 545 yards last year. That almost equates to right about 50 yards per game. That's quite high and uh, something he'd certainly like to get away from but already you can see they're going to get tacked on a pretty good one by the way Eric Day uh, Daniels out of Douglasville Georgia free safety made the tackle and he's the one that latched onto the face mask yeah, he's been a good player for Wofford his entire career he's played all three years and I'll tell you what he's a good football player VMI taking over the football at their own 27 after the run back by Hopkins have now moved it in to Wofford territory at the 49 with a first down Stacked running backs. White along with Hopkins. Lister down the line of scrimmage. Turns, looks to throw. He throws it back against the grain, but overthrows his intended receiver. And that is Justin uh, Malloy. Malloy only caught nine passes all last year for 100 yards, but again, that was set up and was certainly open, but an overthrow that time by Lester brings up second down. Well, i tell you what, that was a good-looking call there by the VMI offense. They had a couple of folks dragging back to the opposite side of the field, and as you mentioned, two people were open. If Lester can convert on that play, it goes a long way. A little different VMI club in the fact they're wearing the white helmets for the first time in the last three years they've worn gold. And, of course, the white pants and jersey at Hopkins gets the call. Got some running room. He'll get a first down as he bangs his way down to the 37-yard line. Hopkins is not Thomas Haskins, but this kid has some foot speed. Let me tell you what it'll help. What they're running with, with Haskins right now, with Haskins, which he's trying to be Haskins, with Hopkins right now, is you hand the ball deep enough to him, they're base blocking on the line of scrimmage, and they're saying, Avi, take the football, find an open spot, and run. If he can do that and has an open space, he'll find it and make some big plays for him. Edmondson, Hulk, Fetter, Christensen, and Fock, the down tackles through the middle. And a handoff to White, trying to get more involved in the offense. And the big guy rumbles for a few yards. Six feet, 250 pounder. Out of St. John's Island, South Carolina, picks up a good game. They'll give him about five on the play. You'll see a lot more of this on a VMI this year. Ted Kane had mentioned this earlier. He's going to go to two tight ends a lot and just a big fullback and line up and run straight at some people. They can also pass and play fake off of that. And you got a big guy like White that can run it right at you. He's a load to bring down. It's a good idea, and it changes up the offense just a little. The Terriers will change their defensive scheme. They normally play three down line when you see the outside linebackers up on the line of scrimmage. Lester with a handoff to Hopkins. Gaping hole on the left side. Edmondson, that fine tackle on that side, opens it. And it's down inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. And VMI, even though they were helped by the face mask, has had a most enjoyable drive right yeah, now. They had. They went to that one-back offense again with the two tight ends. And if you notice, here it is again in, on the replay. And take a look. They hand it to him deep enough, Sam, where he can choose where he wants to go. He sees the hole, picks the hole, and just goes north and south. That's what he can do. A couple of outstanding receivers. Both of them freshmen. Holland, along with Frost, lined up on the near right side. They hand it to the first back through his white. Full back will pick up three. Second down, seven yards to go. You know, Chip, when you and I were talking before the game, how close to the best would Ted Payne, T uh, Kane play it in his first year at VMI? I think we've seen he's put a few wrinkles with a pass, but he's still using that good ground game. Yeah, he yeah, is. And you mentioned a few wrinkles, but they're not dramatic wrinkles. They're things that you can go out and do, and they keep your players from getting into a bad situation, having to make a great play. So you don't have to laser the problems away. Just stop uh, grinning and smiling so much. Jonathan. Here's Lester. Hand off to White. Big fellow will take it to right at the 20. May have penetrated to the 19. That'll bring up a third down play. And they'll need roughly about four yards for a first down for VMI. On the move here in Spartanburg. Coach Ayers was really concerned about what VMI would bring to the table in this first game. Ted Kane's first game as a head coach. You don't know what he's going to bring in. You know he's going to bring in some of what they did at NC State. State, possibly keep a lot of what they did at VMI. Tough to defend somebody when you're not sure what they're going to do. You know, Chip, one of your keys, keep your defense off the field. VMI doing that right now with a sustained drive. Third down, though, and four. 
Lester to throw. Overthrows Malloy, who again had found a seam in the defense. And behind Daniel and Rowe, the two safeties, but it's overthrown. Brings up fourth down. Now, as far as VMI is concerned, Mike Harris, who has had a 45, 47, and 49-yarder last year, will hit this one right about the 26-yard line where they'll spot it. A 36-yard try by Mike Harris. The deep snapper, very important in his third year, is Jake Kickman. And Ellen is the holder. The kick is up. And the kick is no good. He pulled it off to the left. So Wolfers defense. They've been a bit in that first drive, but they didn't break. And they'll get their first opportunity to take over in offense. We'll add that first drive for Wolford on Southern Conference football on Fox Sports South. We return to Spartanburg in a moment. Well, the only thing we missed today here at Fox Sports South is the visor concession because they may need it in this sun-drenched crowd here in Spartanburg, but I have a feeling. And by the way, these are some of the students from Walford, the young men wearing their shirts and ties to a football game. Very interesting. You got to like it. That's the KA group right there saying welcome to Sports South. Thank you yeah, very the much. Kappa Alphas will love the fact that we recognize them, and they're, they're here in abundance. Well, their team will get their hands on the football for the first time. Stepping under center will be Brad Summers, young man from Baton and Rouge, Louisiana. He rolls to the right and then it hands off to the first back through. And by the way, you better buy a program on the backs because as Eden carries it there, he is just as soon be on the sideline every other play and so will most all the other backs as they really run them in and out of there. Boy, you'll see a lot of people in that backfield today. There's no question about that. They will rotate people and they may rotate quarterbacks before it's over with. There's a good look at uh, Brad S Smothers. You see he threw only 78 times with just a shade under 500 yards last year with that Great uh, running game they possess here at Walford. A little trap coming across the middle and a little delay coming to Corey Weaver out of Newberry, South Carolina. Had a little wrinkle in their offense. We'll gain him about five yards, but still will bring up second down and four to go. Walford, by the way, has had a good fall camp, according to Mike Ayers. Limited injuries. They also got two excellent scrimmages. And the quality of youngsters here at Walford, according to Mike Ayers, is much better than he's had in the past. Certainly showing the growth towards the Southern Conference. Man in motion. Smothers rolling. Pitch to the outside man. Turns it upfield. And carrying it is Wolfel. Robbie out of Snellville, Georgia, will get the first down, and Walford's on the move on their first drive. Robbie Wolford missed all of 1996 with a fractured foot. He's just delighted to be back on the field. He wouldn't care if they were playing the band over there. He's just ready to play. Do you see those pulling guards out in front trying to do their damage to the linebackers? And therein lies the strength of the defense for VMI with all three of their linebackers, Curtis, Winfield, and Rogers. Rogers in particular, all back. First back. There's a fumble, and VMI has come up with their first turnover of the game as they recover it out to the 37-yard line. And getting off the bottom of it is going to be big number 90, and that's going to be Jordan Clark. Clark with a fumble recovery, and VMI goes back to work. Here it is again. The ball stripped away, and it just bouncing around, and Jordan Clark pouncing on it, and VMI is in great field position as they got the ball at the 36-yard line. Boy, that's a big turnover there. One of the key factors that we told you, certainly Ted Kane was concerned about turnovers early here at Walford. Mike Ayer said sustained drives. All of a sudden, he's lost it on a fumble, and VMI will keep their defense off the field for still another time. Lester, the quarterback. The pitch to Hopkins. The little guy stands only 5'5". Five, five. Somebody said that's on a little tiny box, and he gets it out to about the 32-yard line. Well, you know, that was a little bit of a concern for Ted Kane coming in. He had three people back in his, on his offensive line for this year, and he really wasn't sure how the new folks would gel in with those who are returning Letterman. But so far, they've been able to block pretty much straight ahead and done a pretty good job. They've had a few traps that they run, but mostly they're, they're able to stand up and go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Little questions on that offensive line for VMI may be answered here early. Hopkins again tries to sprint it to the outside, but that gives Walford a good chance to get their defense roaming down. Scott Jones out of Columbia, South Carolina, who, by the way, is a 3.85 grade point average and plans to be a surgeon and wants to go to med school. He this makes the stop for Walford. You know, this is the way that you stop this going. Jason Rowe comes in and just gets in the backfield and gets to Hopkins before he gets started. That's the way you stop that sprint draw. If you get in the backfield and make him take an extra juke or an extra half second to get 
it somewhere else, and that allows the pursuit to catch up. Lost a couple of yards, so it's third down and six. Does Lester throw? It appears he is. Now he has to scramble. He's still throwing. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver on the far side. And just not able to hang on to it. That's Frost, the young freshman out of Chesapeake, Virginia. But what a nice pass by Lester. Threw it out right on a string. That's the best ball he's thrown, I think, today. And should have come down with that probably. I guarantee you there's some folks kicking themselves on the sideline, especially this young freshman who's thinking, hey, I'm wide open. He's hitting me. I need to make this catch. Here it is again. Oh, he's thinking about keeping the feet in bounds, too. That's where he was looking. Well, Bob, Rob Stein may have had something to do with that. Who knocked it away, or at least got a hand in front of him. A 49-yard try by Martin. His kick is up. Has it got the distance? It does. So from 49 yards, Martin puts it through. And Mike tacks on the first points of the game for VMI. And their crowd that's made their way from VMI and Lexington, Virginia, celebrate early with 7.22 left to go in the opening period of Southern Conference football. Well, Mike Harris, who had a 49-yarder last year for VMI, has just matched that with one here. And has given VMI and the Kedets a 3-0 lead. And he'll be kicking off to Wofford, who fumbled on their first possession of the football game. Four-play, four-yard drive for VMI, but it doesn't matter if you put points on the board. They took 123 off the clock. Daniels, along with Wolfel, are back deep for Wofford as Harris gets ready to kick off from his own 35. Not a lot of wind to worry about. If there's any wind at all, it's slightly to his back. As they look slightly into the sun, kicking off for VMI as they cluster towards the far side of the field. Harris kicks it away. Wolfel will feel it in the end zone. Got a block at the 20, but it falls down on him. And quickly coming up again is Clark, who makes the stop. He's the young man that got the fumble recovery early. And it's going to be a first and ten for Walford as they bring it out beyond their 20 to the 23-yard line. Here's a look at it again. Nice hit coming up by the junior from Salt Lake City, Utah. That's a, that is a, a, what you call being stopped on the spot. And he is certainly getting himself in the role of being one of the keys of this game with a fumble recovery. And now, good coverage on the kickoff. Walford back to the attack. Brad Smothers is the quarterback. Davis... Is he healthy enough to play? That may be the question. Fake handoff. Smothers on the move. Smothers last year and the final game of the season threw a 51-yard touchdown pass to beat the Citadel 26-21 to usher themselves towards the Southern Conference and prove that they can play with some of the clubs in this conference already. Besides being able to throw the football, you just saw how he's able to run the football, too. That's a call a lot of times. They'll fake it in there, and they're blocking for Smothers to keep the football. And Hard to tell from up here which one it was, but it was open. He kept it. Good play. Good gain in the play of six. They try to run it wide this time, and Weaver is going to be in all kinds of trouble as VMI, stunning from the outside, Wigfall. Out of Newport News, Virginia, six feet, 175, number 29, came up to disrupt that play, and he had some help from his teammates. Yeah, Buster Douglas back there, what a great name, Buster yeah. Douglas, you know, and he's not a fighter. This, this young man's on the Dean's list at VMI. This is a way that you break up this kind of offense if you get in the backfield. That's the key to a lot of these offenses. If you can get in the backfield and stir it up, change the pacing a little bit, both teams have had some success doing that so far. By the way, Mr. Douglas, that was Chip Tarkington saying that you're not a fighter. Uh, <laughs> just get this straight. Here. Wait a minute. Back goes Smothers. He's throwing over the middle. It's complete. Out to the 30-yard line. Ball is on the ground, but created on the uh, contact with the ground. And they get it ahead. That's going to be Lockhart with a catch. Moving it out and gets near the first down stake. Smothers showed some pretty good... Uh, Poise back in that pocket. Yep. Another tight end dragging across the middle. Nice catch. He goes down and uh, they're going to call him down. We'll have to see where they're going to mark that football. Well, that's a nice play. Nice safe pass for the quarterback. Good call by Mike Ayers Bunch. I mean, that's a good call. Referee and crew coming out with a change. By the way, Lockhart, interesting story. He came to Walford, played uh, well, then transferred to South Carolina. 
then had to set out a year when he made the transfer, played briefly with them, at least in their workouts, then had to set out another year when he transferred back to Walford, and this is a guy that's 6'7", 270, and already more than a dozen scouts have come in to look at him, along with their big All-American center, Dan Williams. They like them both to head on to the NFL. They should. They're good-sized young men, and they're bright young men. So it wasn't up for the first down. Walford trailing 3 to nothing. Smothers here again to Weaver. Weaver, nice little stutter step, and then it runs out of real estate. But he does get past the linebackers. And a gain on the play of roughly about five yards as Weaver weaves his way through for Walford. Wigfall, the corner, coming up to make still another stop here. I tell you, you got to stay at home against this Wofford offense. They'll go one way and then go another way. And look at that tackle by Kisan Wigfall. I mean, that's, that's meeting you chin strap to chin strap. Wyndham number five, if you're calling the most experienced of one of their receivers, is in there for Walford, replacing Scott, the young freshman. And Smothers is going to be at all kinds of trouble as he's dropped down. At that time, you see the fine linebacker, number 45, Mike Rogers. We will call his name a lot today. Lynchburg, Virginia. He is a preseason All-American selected by, sporting, by the Sports Network. Led the conference in tackles last year with 156 stops. And you know, if he can do the same thing this year with the number of stops, he will become VMI's all-time leading tackler. He is some kind of football player. And in this new defense, they've gone to a 4-3. He's right in the middle. He's going to love this new defense. Biggest cheerleader for him might be John Wilson, who holds the record at VMI with 456 stops. It's a third down. Roughly about six needed here for the Terriers. And the play clock is going to wind down. And it'll cost them five. And now that may change the play call here for the Terriers. You know, one of the things about the Southern Conference coming for the first time, and the first time on television on Fox Sports South for the Terriers, one thing Mike Ayers tried to emphasize, let's get the call. And it is a delay. Third down. Is the fact that after the practice yesterday, kind of running through plays, kind of getting yourself... He said, fellas, let's prepare and go into the game just as if it's any other game. Somehow, I don't think the players really buy that, particularly with the importance of this game for his conference, for his Southern Conference, and opening, of course, this big stadium this year for the first full year. Well, you're playing for something now. Every game that's a conference game really matters, and these players, are they're conscious of that. One lone running back behind Smothers after the five-yard step off. It's third down. They'll need 11. There's the fake. Smothers on the move, but just gets back to the line of scrimmage as the VMI defense stayed at home and makes the stop. And again, making the stop on the far side is Buster Douglas, the big guy out of Sutton, West Virginia. 6-3-2-49. Here's Kick a look time at it for again. Walford. Yeah, here's a look at it again. It looks like Smothers faked, and he felt like there was so much pressure that he just had to go ahead and tuck it under and run, and he tried to just do what he could do with it, and he got back to the line of scrimmage. Brandon Kale will get the kickoff. Average 36.4 yards last year as the kicker for Walford. Snaps a little low. Gets a pretty good hanger out of there to get some good coverage. And the ball dropped just at the last minute. And it's down finally by Walford. That time the deep back who was Cornell Lewis looked up into the sun and just simply lost it. Completely lost it. And going in that direction, you can lose it, obviously, because he did. He had his eyes on it and they just started backing away right at the end. You don't do that unless something gets in your eyes. And he obviously backed up. Well, the former assistant coach at Walford, now the mayor of Spartanburg, <laughs> is standing downstairs with Matt Suarez. That's right, Sam. Thanks a lot. James Talley, the mayor of Spartanburg. Mayor Talley is with me. And you mentioned it, the former wide receivers coach here at Walford, and now the mayor in Spartanburg. Tell us a little bit how that came about. Well, it's, it was a long uh, marriage here with, the, with Walford College at, uh, as a wide receiver coach. And it was something that I'd been on city council for 12 years, and this was an opportunity to move into the mayor's office. So we took that. I had good training here at Walford to get ready for that. Well, now being the mayor you could not ask for a more special day a chamber of commerce day if you will here beautiful weather and talk about this facility your role that you played in getting this here at Watford and plus the impact the Carolina Panthers have had on your city as well it has been a tremendous impact it has brought definitely identification to Spartanburg and it's done a lot for Watford College this facility here is a state-of-the-art facility and people come by just to see this uh, it's a it was a great opportunity for the city and Watford to work together to make this happen and it happened uh, 
with a with a great deal of collaboration and understanding and give and take, and it uh, and it serves both the city and Wofford well. And it doesn't hurt at all to have the Panthers here in Spartanburg. As a matter of fact, that was one of the reasons that that brought us to this point today. Well, Mayor Talley, congratulations, the stadium. Best of luck and enjoy the game. Thank you. Good Back to you, Stan. Thanks very much. And tell the mayor I'll take that tie anytime he'd like to give it up. Well, a good pass out to Holland that time on a good string throw. That time by Lester gets the first down, but what a hit by Rob Stein. Woo, we talked about laying the hardware to somebody. Rob Stein, watch this. If you want to see a textbook way to tackle, watch Rob. Watch his belly button and then boom, picks him up and lower the boot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a takedown in wrestling. It is indeed. And in college wrestling, you get a couple of points out of that. <laughs> First and ten. Lester back to throw again. Going that time, Holland went inside and the pass was thrown to the outside. There is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. You know, that seven to five step drop is really still a little bit of a problem for Lester right now. Yeah, you can see it in his footwork. He's just not adjusted to the five step instead of the seven step. And they've got a procedure penalty against VMI, so it'll back him up, and that'll change things. But have you noticed, though, in the last couple of times that he's thrown the football, he's got his feet set a little better so that he is making a better throw? That time the receiver turned in instead of out. That changes things. But he's beginning to feel a little more confident. And I think the longer amount of time that Lester plays in this offense, I think the more comfortable he'll get in this offense. Lester, a three-year starter, 33 consecutive starts. Now in his senior year, one of the three tri-captains for the club. He's back to throw. Has a lot of trouble. Throws it on the screen to Hopkins. Hopkins with a block in the corner, but not enough. They gain the five, plus about three. That'll bring up... About seven yards needed here for VMI as they'll have the ball just off their own sideline out at the hash mark. Lester had some company back there. Yeah, Rob Stein made another nice play, but look at this. Lester learning to, to throw the screen pass. Still a different drop. He made a nice move here. Nick, I'll tell you what, some fine blocks coming up. There's a nice move right there. If Hopkins has got one more step, he's down the sidelines. Number 64, Fritz Mason was the man who's putting the pressure on Lester, who pitches at the last second. Gets it out, trying to turn is Jabbar Bean. And you talk about some great support and coverage that time by Walford College. They had people on the corners and turned it in very, very nicely. And it's really no gain, maybe a yard, two at the most at the 49. Al Lester, more comfortable running this option, but look at all the people out here from Wofford. It wouldn't make any difference if the pitch would have been right in his hands. Four defenders out there to cover the wide man, the pitch man on the option. Josh Thompson, the middle linebacker, was the man. A Dean's honor roll student here at Wofford was leading the charge. Third down. About five and a half needed for VMI. They lead it on the strength of a 49-yard field goal, 3-0. Bean fights for only about a yard, and that's all. And again, they battle it down. This time it's Ben Day, the middle linebacker out of Charlotte. Olympic high in North Carolina makes the stop, and it's kick time for the Cadets. Greg Eller, who, interesting enough, started in the quarterback role last year, moved to a wide receiver. We'll do the kicking as we watch it again here. Nowhere to go. Look for a hole and hide there. Too many, too many people wearing opposite colored shirts. Tony Young also was in with Thompson on that last stop. Ellen will kick the ball away. He'll hit it about his own 40-yard line. Long snap is perfect. It's a high kick, but not a lot of distance. Young will watch it bound and jump out of bounds, and Walford will have excellent field position around their own 25-yard line. So Greg Allen kind of shanked it just a tad off the side of his foot. I watched him in the pregame practice yesterday. And uh, he had a little problem getting any kind of rotation on it. Gets only 24 yards out of that kick. And Walford again on their third possession will take over. Coming in, Brad Smothers will run the attack. Smothers again with 514 yards rushing last year. Pass for just a shade under 500 yards, but again, keep in mind, some games they don't pass, but about 8, 9, 10 times a game. Weaver again. Well, they 
I like that little trap up the middle for Weaver. He gains good yards, about six yards. You know, really what that is is, is a, just a change around from the old cross buck is really what it is. And it really can open up a big hole against a 4-3 defense. And Whopper is having a lot of success getting it up in there. Some good blocking on an offensive line that everybody is back from last year. This is the strength of the Whopper team is their offensive line. Timeout being called here with a 14.9 seconds to go in the period and a 3-0 score. And they want to make sure that the something's in readiness here is Ron Buckner, our referee, has stopped play. I think they just wanted to talk to that new referee we have now. That's, That's right. Seven Al just wanted to make sure everybody knew his name. And probably wake him up back there. <laughs> Second best rushing club in all of uh, one double A football last year, averaging over 288. Walker down the line of scrimmage. Smothers gets it out to the 37 yard line, make it the 36. Enough for a first down, and that ends the first quarter. Not quite. 2.5 seconds after the chain is set. We'll be finishing the first period of today's game. That's what Smothers can bring to the table. Experience in playing. He knows how to run the option when they go and run the option. He does a nice job of cutting it up, just getting enough for a first down, and that's what the Walker offense wants to do. Well, after, the after the chain is set, the clock is wound, and we've at the end of the first period. Southern Conference football on Fox Sports South. Walker Terriers trailing the key decks of EMI 3-0. Welcome back to Fox Sports South and our coverage of Southern Conference football, BMI, on the strength of a 49-yard field goal by Mike Harris has a 3-0 lead. Walker, the Terriers, now will swing around. They'll take over the football first and 10. They'll have it at their own 35-yard line. The two halfbacks you see split outside the tackles. And they bring it back to... The inside and try to get running room for Wolfel. Well, again, out with an injury last year, just as Chip pointed out, happy to be back. But VMI kind of greeted him unceremonially at the line of scrimmage for maybe a gain of about a half a yard. Well, Mike Rogers, we've mentioned his name already a bunch of times. He's the guy that gets into the backfield, calls in problems. VMI trying to stunt just enough, not a whole lot, but just enough to try to get into the backfield. They, they do not want the motor of Wofford to get started with these backs. They will stay pretty traditional 4-3 will BMI with those outstanding linebackers. Again, all three coming back from a year ago. Second down, roughly the same 10. They give it to the first back through, and Michael Edens out of Columbia, South Carolina. Last year carrying for 389 yards and seven touchdowns. Gains about seven on the play. Yeah, he knows what to do when he gets into the end zone. Let's take a look. He ran right behind the big guy there, the big offensive center, big Dan Williams. Take a look at him. I believe I'd run behind him a lot, wouldn't you? I will just hide in his shadow a lot. Yeah, Seattle's already been here in the last few weeks with Seahawks taking a look at him. He, he's got a real good chance to be drafted pretty highly. Let's see if I get this right. The Tennessee Oilers were here yesterday to take a look <laughs> as well. There's the fake handoff. They cut it to the inside. With the ball is Wolfe. He is gone. Let's see if somebody can catch him. They try to catch him. They finally do it the 15-yard line. And it took some good speed from the outside, but Darius Jackson, number 28, to do it. But Wolford has just run it up the sidelines, and Wolford is now threatening to score and take the lead here in the second period. Boy, what a phenomenal call. That's just a draw play out of a different formation. What a gorgeous, gorgeous call. Here it is again in slow motion. Look at this. It's just like a draw play. The halfback on the right side just waits and waits and waits, and look at that hole. And then Wolfel, who's tickled to death to be playing again, he says, oh, my gosh, look at all this green grass. I'm going to run. He thought he was going to score. I know he thought he was going to score. Great run, great play by Wofford. Darius Jackson making that final stop at the 21. The handoff again, straight up the middle this time to Miles Lane. He gained 553 yards and six touchdowns last year. So you can see Edens and Lane very accomplished running out of that fullback slot. You know what you love about Miles Lane, 5'11", senior? He was a walk-on. A walk-on. I love that. I love to see walk-ons who hang with the program and, and play. He's the top of returning rusher at fullback for Wofford. Bloodville, Tennessee is home as Brad Smothers, you know that big run just a moment ago has kind of ignited his adrenaline. This time they hand it off and Lane is going nowhere. Guess who? Buster Douglas says, no, you don't. He makes a great stop behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of about a yard. The Buster's had some big plays for VMI early in this football game and he's got some fight in him. 
I knew you were going to do that again, weren't you? <laughs> There's a good look right there. Just meeting, and, and as we said, BMI trying to get into the backfield before Wofford's motor starts running. What, are you trying to get off the hook or something? Now? No, he wasn't no. a fighter. Oh, no, oh, no, he's a fighter. He's a, he's a good football player. Third down, seven yards to go for Wofford. They're threatening to try to get something on the board, and back is Smothers to throw. Looking to go the other way, sidestepping tacklers at the 10 to the 5, and finally drilling down, the ball is loose. VMI recovers, and it is a VMI fumble recovery, and they pick it up and will take it back the other way as Whitfall comes up with a fumble. After again, Smothers had just delighted this crowd, taking it down inside the 10. Before we mentioned about no turnovers really for either team and I know Coach Ayers just cannot believe this Smothers made a great play he found the opening, ran back against the grain, look at the blocking here by the lineman, this is stellar, and then he's changing hands and I don't know how he ever, if he ever really got a good handle on the ball good hit on him there, and the ball kicks loose, you know, big, big turnover for the Keydets. Wigfall makes the fumble recovery, but it was Cornell Lewis that created the fumble in the first place with a hit on Smothers first and 10 VMI, up by three. Hand off to the fullback White. He rumbles and tumbles after the 25 yard line. Boy, don't get in front of him. First down, VMI. You know, it's pretty good that he's even playing. He's been battling a bad ankle sprain here in the last week or so, and he was doubtful. In fact, we've seen some other folks at that fullback slot, but he didn't look like he was too slow there. Big, 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 big play for VMI to get out of a deep hole. And you know, he actually has had some problems uh, even getting into the workouts. Did not work out until about midweek this week. He's the lone running back. Another first down for VMI. 11.45 to go. First half, they lead by a field goal. White this time, fumble in the backfield. And down with it. Lester will fall on it. But what a smack at the line of scrimmage that time by Walford as they threw up the stone wall and White was freed from the football and Lester makes the recovery. You think these two teams aren't glad not to be hitting each other anymore? Mm. They are laying the leather to each other. My goodness, they're popping each other. You know, it's really hard to decide who hit him in the line of scrimmage because everybody was there. Ooh, lot, First man to come folks. up, though, was uh, Thomas Tench. Out of uh, Calhoun Falls, South Carolina. Boy, he put a stick on him. 6 2 270. Second down, loss of five. 15 to go. As Lester's back to throw. Plenty of time. The catch is made, falling out of bounds on the far side. And it's going to be getting that five back, but then not getting quite enough for all of it. And Travis Hunt is the man that stretched out for the catch on the far side. Notice Al Lester again. Seemed to be a little more confident there. Got his feet set and threw the ball on the line. Nice catch by Travis Hunt. But Lester beginning to look like he's feeling more confident. If he feels more confident, this really helps out VMI's hopes because they were concerned about the offense moving the football. One of their outstanding offensive linemen, Jason Fletcher, out with a back injury, may not play at all this year. So they've had to have some people step up. Stepping back now is Lester. Swings to Hopkins. He is hit at the exact moment the ball is there by Steve Lindsay out of Thomasville, North Carolina. And he knocks the football loose. What a great timing play by Lindsay. You know, with that play, and, and right here you're going to go, whee, doggies, because if he doesn't make this play, they, get, they got BMI's got a lot of room. Take a look at this. If he doesn't make the play, look at all the white shirts in front of him, and they've got a three-on-three -three situation. That is a stellar, stellar defensive play. And the crowd on the near side applauding the defensive and then as they come off after the exact hit. BMI will have to kick it away. Greg Allen will hit it about his own 22-yard line, make it his own 18. It was partially tapped on its way out. But he gets a good bounce as it rolls well inside the 40-yard line. Back there getting a tap on it that time was Daniels, as he may have got a finger on it, but nonetheless, it'll be Walfer's football. Good field position after the punt is partially blocked. We're back with more BMI leading three to nothing. Welcome back out to Spartanburg, South Carolina here in the second quarter. Wofford trailing VMI in a defensive strike of 3-0. And joining me now, the athletic director at VMI, Davis Babin. What a first half so far, Davis. It's a new era at VMI. Head coach Ted Kane in his first year. Talk about the decision process to bring in Ted Kane from NC State. We're really excited about Ted. He was a proven winner at both Furman with a number of Southern Conference championships and at NC State as offensive coordinator at both schools. Had some military experience as well in his back 
background, and he played it at Furman in this league. So he has a good knowledge of what it takes to succeed, and he's succeeded everywhere he's been. Well, his first year, it's a tough road for him. The schedule, three of the first games for the Cadets are on the road. Three of the first four on the road, and that'll uh, test us early, but we're a very veteran team, especially defensively, and uh, we know that we've got to make the most of the early part of the schedule. It's a, it's a challenge for us, but I think they will uh, respond because uh, he's done a great job along with his staff of preparing them for a, a tough early season schedule. Well, congratulations on your new coach, and enjoy the second half. Thank you very much. Davis Babb of VMI has been our guest. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Matt. Smothers on the last rollout. Wigfall making another good stop on him after a gain of four. This time Walker tests the inside running game to see if anything's there. Will Hunter with a carry. And again, the entire center of the lineup, led by Billy Thomas, makes a stop for VMI. Game's only three to nothing. You would think it would be close in the statistics. It is. Total yards, Wofford with 97, VMI with 86, time of possession, 948 for VMI, 933 for Wofford. That's pretty close. Wofford faced with a third down and about six to go. Smothers with a fake. Outside will get to the 45. VMI's defense all around him, led by who else? Mike Rogers. Number 45 and help. And it'll be shy of a first down. Wofford not in a gambling mood, or are you? The kicking team has not come on the field yet. Third and about a yard and a half needed. Well, this is a chance. I mean, if you're in a situation, you've almost got it to midfield. You can really say something to your offense if you decide to go for it. You they tell are. your offensive line, hey, we can make this. It gives them a big boost. They just had a good drive that ended with a fumble. Make the folks think that they can get this first down. And this is a big, big confidence boost if they can pick this up right now. Fourth down, about two yards, yard and a half, more than likely, for Walford at their own 45. They turn, fake the handoff, smothers to the outside. He's got it up for the first down, and then is hammered back. But the forward progress will move him beyond the stake. Referee's uh, spotting it very carefully, though. And with that spot right now, it appears it's first down, and it is for Walford. What a gutty call early in this game. Definitely a gutty call, but, you know, not a bad percentage call. They only had a couple, of, like you said, a yard and a half, maybe two yards to go get that big offensive line to move forward. Did you notice there was no penetration that time? Smothers just cut it up after he faked it, and he had enough to get the first down. That's where an experienced quarterback comes in handy, too. So first down for the Terriers. Just shy of midfield. 8.22 to go, first half. They trail 3-0. Smothers trying to get a man around. Eric Oden that time out of Washington, North Carolina. And it was absolutely no place to go. Oh, as Billy Thomas again in on the stop. And doing a job for VMI. Boy, he's a mobile 6'3", 260 guy. He is, and he came from the backside. They're pulling linemen, pulling from the right to the left side, trying to lead on that sweep play. They didn't think Thomas would get in there that quick, but Thomas went with the folks, did not stay home thinking he was going to get trapped back at him. He just followed the play and was able to get the back in the backfield. Thomas, a starter on last year's club out of Alderson, West Virginia, and he plays the down left tackle on this second down play. Second and about 14 for Walford. Back to throw, Smothers. Over the middle, intercepted at the 45. Back it comes, and it's Thornton. He's going to take it all the way, VMI. On an interception, 55 yards for the TD on the intercept for VMI. And Smothers trying to get it to one of the big tight ends. Flew well out of one up. And under Thornton goes and runs it the rest of the way. He, by the way, ran one of the legs of the Southern Conference Championship 400-meter relay team. So once he got open field chip, there wasn't that much of a chance he was going to get caught. He did the same thing in high school. Same thing in high school, if you can believe. He can fly, and you saw some of his speed right there. So turnovers have been a factor today. Two fumbles and now an intercept going up against Wolford. One of them very costly because they were inside the 10-yard line going for a potential score. Harris will try to kick the extra point. It is up, and it is good. So make that 9 turn to a 10 for VMI. And the interception again by Thornton. Right in the middle, takes it up the sideline, and VMI jumps out 10 to nothing here in the opening half in Spartanburg. Well, a great crowd here in Spartanburg, South Carolina, 10-0 VMI after capitalizing on a 55-yard interception here. Smothers just behind Matt Lockhart and Andre Thornton read it perfectly. 
and he knows what to do with the football when he takes it. He was a running back in high school as well as a defensive back, played at Monacan High School in Richmond, Virginia, and you know what? He did a lot of that in high school, running to the end zone. Whoa, what a stride he's got on him, huh? Kickoff will be Mike Harris. 10-0 VMI. He drives a kick deep into the end zone. VMI is bringing it out to the 15 to the 20. Out to the 35-yard line and ahead to the 39. And they bring it straight ahead. And coming out is going to be, I believe, Daniels carrying it out of there. Eric Daniels out of Douglasville, Georgia, with the return. And what a nice job that was. You know, he's done just about everything while he's been at Wofford. He's been a staple for three years and just makes things happen and does good things. Doesn't make very many mistakes here. Just heads north and south. Not a lot flashy here, but he's running north and south. Nice move there. Hangs on to the football and reaching for the football. That's a great return. You hate to say that this is a must series for Wofford, but Wofford really needs to get some points on the board in this series. BMI was concerned on staying away from turnovers. They have forced three by Walker today. Smothers on the naked uh, bootleg play in his own. Comes out, finally steps away from one man and then dives forward. And an excellent game by Smothers who kind of crossed up the defense that time expecting something in the middle. Let's take a look at the big guy in the middle. Big Dan Williams again. Now you know what? You're not going anywhere if he gets a hold of you. I'm telling you what, he is big, and that's all he needs to do. And look, he's going after somebody else. He's going to get two with one swoop. He had 208 knockdowns last year. And 217 the year before. This kid really knows how to block. Matt Coley, by the way, was the man he took the first shot at. Speaking of defensive plays, VMI shoots a man across the line of scrimmage. That is going to be Kelly Cook. Cook, who had six sacks to lead this club last year, 96 tackles, and he steps across the line of scrimmage for... A loss as a man is down here for VMI, or excuse me, for Walford, and that is Smothers. Well, and the interesting thing now is that Brian Davis looks like he may be checking into the game. We mentioned that he was projected to be the starter, had a little injury, not able to take the starting role. They weren't sure he was going to dress out, but he's going to dress out and play. And the interesting thing about Kelly Cook, you mentioned him, he was all Southern Conference last year, beaten out by our friend Buster Douglas. So Buster. what that does tell you about Buster, pretty good player. That was a knockout punch, wasn't it? It was a knockout punch. Maybe Kelly's got one of his own as he comes in for a big play, and it's great to see Smothers up. And now he appears to be limping on at least his right leg or possibly right ankle himself. Maybe a little sprain. Maybe Matt Swearing can find out for us exactly what his prognosis is. He's on that sideline and will do that job for us here in a moment. So the loss is all the way back to midfield. This is Davis, the new quarterback now. He's back to throw for his first throw. A little sidearm delivered to the near side. Wolfel will catch it. They'll gain about six yards is all on the play. It'll bring up now about eight yards still for a first down here for the Terriers. How about that? You come right off the sidelines and throw in your first play. Brian Davis, Jr., 5'11", 180. He and Smothers, they look like bookend brothers to me. You can't tell one from the other much except that they wear different jerseys. They look so much alike. 5'11", 180 for Davis, 5'10", 180 for Smothers. Davis assessing the defense, changing the call at the line of scrimmage. 6.17 left to go in the first half. Plenty of time on the play clock with a man in motion. Inside, they get it once again to Wolford. And the defense stayed at home. VMI drops him down for a gain of only a two yards. As the inside middle of that uh, defense for VMI, led by Marlon Johnson, number 95, make the stop for the key decks. That play worked the first time. Went for a long game with Wolford. This time, though, you're right, VMI stayed at home. BMI will set up for the return, at least it appears, with a down four with the three linebackers at home. As Wolford will kick it away with Kale. Brandon pounds one deep. They'll watch this one head to the end zone and hits on the goal line. It hops back out to the four. There's a flag down. Maybe an illegal block by the return man. In this case, it was going to be Cornell Lewis. Back there with the ball hanging in the air, made a block. And we'll see if that indeed is the call. If it's not, it'll be deep into territory as one of the officials already picked up the ball and was walking it back before the discussion has ended here. That was that back judge we've been talking about. I think he was going to try to run with it. He figured he could make a play. So they're going to call it block and blow the waist. But you know, the back is as far back as the ball is at the three, it's only going to move it back to the one and a half. <laughs> 
They now officially call it a touchback. The ball, I thought it hit in the end zone as well. Hit the line. Yep. If they're calling a touchback, I don't know why the one official is standing on the four-yard line. By the receiving team, after giving a fair catch signal, 15 yards, a half the distance. First down going this way. So it is half the distance, and they'll take it back. Interesting enough, all the way back to about the six-yard line. If it's a touchback, it's at the 20. And takes it to the 10. I mean, couldn't have called it a touchback. Unless it was the spot of the foul penalty. Apparently that's what it is. Spot of the foul penalty, half the distance. Goes back to the six-yard line. And that's where VMI will take over with a 10-0 lead first half. Back here at the uh, stadium is Spartanburg. The injury to Brad Smothers, the quarterback of the Terriers. Well, it's not all that serious. It's a sprained ankle. They've taped it up. He's going to try and jog on it right now. They believe he will play, if not in the second quarter, sometime during the second half. Back upstairs. Thank you, Matt. Man on the spot for us down on that Walford sideline. Saw Smothers getting the shoe, and now the tape going on to reinforce it. As Ted Kane and his Keydats lead with a score of 10 to nothing. 5.31 to go, first half. They have the ball at their own six-yard line after the spot of the penalty foul and half the distance to the goal line. On after the fair catch, Lewis making a block below the waist. And off to White. Big fullback carries about three or four of the Terriers along with him. And moves it out to the 10, a gain of four yards on the play. Well, here's where you just really want to be careful not to do anything that you would consider to be a bad mistake. Don't turn it over here. Good man to hand it to is wide up the middle. He's going to put those two big arms around that foot. There's no room for anybody to see the ball with those two big arms around it. He's, look, at those, look at those machine guns he's carrying. Mercy. I'll call him Mr. White the rest That's of the day. That's a good idea. <laughs> it's now second down. They actually gave him only two on the play, so it's second and eight. They give to Hopkins. And the little guy's going nowhere. Wofford's whole front line, along with their linebackers, all of them right on top of the play. Third down, roughly seven yards to go here for VMI. They're using that clock, though, at 4.37 left to go in the half. Yeah, if you're VMI right now, you're thinking, boy, if we could turn out one or two first downs and not allow the Wofford offense to get the football back before half, wouldn't it be lovely to take a 10 to nothing lead in? That's what they're saying right now, I can tell you. Back to the three down linemen, and the two linebackers drawn right up on the line of scrimmage for Wofford. Split the running backs behind Lester. Handoff goes to Hopkins, sprints to the outside. He's got enough for the first down as he tumbles out to around the 18-yard line. Pursuit from the inside was there a little late. And the play carries outside for the first down here for, again, VMI and the key dance. And the most important thing about that is that VMI will continue to run some clock and keep the Wofford offense off the field. Just a little draw play, White leading Hopkins through, and he just kept trying to find a hole, trying to find a hole, trying to find a hole. Knew where the first down marker was. You can see him just look over there on the right side. He knew where he had to go to get that first down. And off again to Hopkins. Out of the tailback, a flag flies in the center of the line. A potential holding call against VMI as they had first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Ted Kane is a great story in the fact that he does come back to his home state of South Carolina from nearby Aiken, South Carolina. Played his college football just over in Greenville at uh, Furman. Stayed there as a grad assistant, eight years as a full assistant before going with Mr. Sheridan and over to North Carolina State where he spent 11 years before getting the call for his first head coaching job. Well, you know, he's been around some good coaches. You, you, you mentioned Dick Sheridan, but there was a guy by the name of Art Baker. Yep. There was some kind of football coach at Furman and went on and coached at the Citadel, too. So he's been around good people all of his football career and football life, especially on the college level. Art Baker was also an assistant coach at Texas Tech, my alma mater, out in Lubbock. And you could just see, he came in there with uh, Jim Carlin, as a matter of fact. And you could see that intensity, and he carried it right over to that Furman program. Still a long discussion going on. Well, if you're Wofford... Half the distance to go. Repeat. First down. But if you're Wofford, you had a decision there. Because with the clock running down, you give them another 30 seconds or so if you give them another play. But you still, you, would you rather have the clock or would you rather have them move back half the distance? Half the distance is what they chose. Probably not a bad idea. Not bad at all at the nine-yard line. Let's call it the nine and a half. Lester having to check off at the line of scrimmage. Stacked running backs. Split receivers. 
Plenty of time on the play clock. It's down to a dozen. Turns on the roll and from behind. The guy that's really started to step up again is Scott Jones, number 82. He has run down a couple of plays from sideline to sideline here. He, along with Vance Jones, one of the cornerbacks, have done an excellent job, number 24. Hollis Langston also making a pretty good play there from his nose tackle position. You know, they've got a lot of depth that nose tackle offer does. They've played a lot of people at that nose position. And really, that entire front three that they move around, I'm talking about the down linemen, they can rotate a lot of different folks in there. Momentary timeout here again by the officials. I think it's an equipment problem by Josh Thompson. Well, we've got this equipment to Thompson being taken care of. Back down to Matt Swarad. Matt? Thanks, guys. I'm here with the chairman of the Board of Trustees at Wofford College, Rob Gregory, and it's a beautiful day for your entrance into the Southern Conference. We've seen the football side of Wofford. How about the academic side? Highly rated. Well, thank you very much. We're very pleased with the academic side and our student athletes at Wofford, and we, we, we stress a complete student athlete, and that's what we have represented here. As recently evidenced by the, we were ranked in the top ten in the graduation rates of all Division I schools in the country, which we were delighted. So it speaks well for the program overall, and it speaks well for the student body in general. So that's our emphasis here, is having a student and an athlete, and hopefully we'll do better than uh, what we're doing right now. And the move to the Southern Conference certainly helps you out recognition-wise across the nation on the sports scene as well. Yes, uh, the visibility will, will help our program both on the athletic side, and we, and we believe it will help us in uh, recruiting just general students as we get increased recognition. Being a small school like Wofford, you normally don't get the uh, publicity the bigger schools do. And joining the Southern Conference, it feels like uh, coming home. Uh, we've had relationships with uh, Davis and Furman and the Citadel for 100 years, and now we're establishing it with uh, VMI and the other fine schools, and uh, we're, we're very privileged to join the Southern Conference. Great facilities, and best of luck to you down the road, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you very much, Matt. Sam Smith, along with Chip Tarkington, joining you in Southern Conference football, and what's the update here on Smothers right now, Chip? Well, they've decided they want to do some x-rays just in case. They're going to do that at halftime, and then they're going to determine his status as a quarterback, and we mentioned Brian Davis already banged up. He used to be starter, now back up, who can, who can play, and obviously just came in that last series. We'll have to wait and see what happens when they take those x-rays at halftime. Torres Amons, by the way, number 90, made that last play from Conyers, Georgia. And it forces VMI to using up a timeout on a third down, and they almost have to have a roadmap to get back out to the 29 for a first down here. But they're using the clock again at 2.26 left to go in the first half. You're By on. the way, a bevy of halftime guests for us, including the president of this fine university, our college at Walford, 25th year True. as the president of the college. Dr. Lesane will be joining us along with their athletic director and many other outstanding guests at halftime along with the Gibbs, Jim and Marsha. Here is once again Hopkins. And I'll tell you one thing about this Walford defense. They have suddenly kind of turned it up a little notch here. Well, I think they see a chance for their offense. They've got two timeouts left in the first half. They knew they had to make something happen defensively to give their offense a chance to get in the end zone before halftime. They really did kick it up. Well, Greg Allen may have to have uh, another, or excuse me, it'll be uh, Greg Allen in the end zone. He may have to have an extra pad or two because Walford is going to come after this one in the end zone. You can bet on that. Well, he's had a 24 and a 37-yard punt. He needs to add those together on this one. Walford's had something like eight blocked uh, kicks in the last couple of years. They really know how to come. Allen gets it out. It's not going to be a deep one, but it does have good hang time. And Young will feel it at about his own 46-yard line. That will be first and 10 for Walford, and time to do something. It'll be at 35 before half. Yeah, and once again, you got the two timeouts. You've got an offense that can score in a hurry. We've seen already today some long runs by Walford. They just haven't converted and got the ball in the end zone. You know, a tough job here for Brian Davis, who maybe was not expected to play today, has forced him the cause of the injury to Smothers, but now has to step into the breach after a 38-yard kick, a good one, with excellent hang time by Ellen under a great deal of pressure out of the end zone. Davis, wing back in motion. 
Rolling near sideline. This is Brian Davis. He gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Chased down and knocked out of bounds by Cornell Lewis. He's the free safety for VMI. Boy, these two quarterbacks do look so similar, particularly on the rollout and the run. Now, like I told you, if they didn't have on different jerseys, you can't <laughs> tell one from the other. Nice problem to have. Mike Ayers with the same problem that Ted Gaines got. He's got a couple of folks he can go to. And a quarterback, you know, it just seems like there's going to get somebody hurt or somebody's going to get nicked up during the year. you got to have two, two people who can pull the trigger. Two backs just outside the tackles and a tight end on the left. And here is Davis coming on the rollout again. And again, he's going to be taken out of bounds. Tackle on the near side by Andre Curtis, number five, out of Beaverton, Virginia. And knocks him out of bounds, but it's another first down. And talk about using the clock. They've used only 11 seconds in a couple of big runs here. Well, here you go with Davis. You know, if the play works the first time, make him stop it. Run it again. And he runs it again, just trying to find any scene that he can. Nice run and smart play getting out of bounds. Save that clock. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> and Davis runs it. Look how nicely he stayed in bounds. Everybody expecting him to take a sidestep to the right. He just stayed in bounds. He got another yep. five yards out of that. First down, 10 yards to go at the 25. Lone running backs is Edens. Davis taking plenty of time. It's down to five on the play clock. And the same play. Blocking out by Edens. Davis turns it. They may have to take a timeout here to stop the clock with a minute 16 or huddle. And now it is going to be a timeout taken by Davis. So an excellent running game here, all by Brian Davis out of Walterboro, South Carolina. Last year, he rushed for only 185 yards, but boy, he's turning up a, a little notch on three straight plays here. And you know what? There was no question that he was going to run it. Did you see the way he took yeah. that ball? And I mean, immediately, he says, I'm running the football, and he's looked great running the football. He's been the offense here this drive. And you know a guy that did a great job was Edens, who was the lead blocker out of the fullback, and guess who he tracked down? Mike Rogers. That was the first guy he tried to get a, a shoulder pad and a helmet on to get him out of the play, and Davis turns it up for another good game. Well, you know, you can do a lot of things now where the football is. Three points would be good. Seven points would be great for Wofford. But, you know, you can be a little bit bolder now with the ball at the 19-yard line. They may try to run the same kind of play, and Davis may stop and throw. Don't be surprised right now. Now you're making catch BMI coming up, coming up, coming up, and it could be a good time to put a little pass in. You, may, re the you may recall Walford went on a gutty fourth down play at their own 45-yard line before giving it up on an intercept, a 55-yard return for BMI. So they know how to gamble a little bit, but right now it's just state of basics with a first and 10 at the 15. Make it the 14. Minute 16 to go before halftime. Referee's making sure the ball is ready for play. Davis will bow under the big All-American Dan Williams. 6'3", 325 pounds, said he'll lose 15 pounds in the game today. Handoff, Edens at the 5. That's where he's taken down. Now do they stop the clock with another timeout with a minute 10? No, they're going to run it. Williams getting his crew up on the line of scrimmage quickly. Wyndham will try to run a play in, and you see him coming bottom of the screen. And Davis tries to convey it. People getting in the right position. Lockhart goes from left side to right side. The big tight end, number 83. Play clock down to 14. Game clock down to 48. Davis rolling behind blockers. Touchdown, Walker. Welcome to the Brian Davis Show. Well, I'll tell you what. If you want to put a picture book together on the quarterback and the option, Mr. Davis is just giving you the first chapter. He did it brilliantly. Well, he had four big runs on that drive, and all of them picked up big yardage. This is a nice, nice play here. And you know what? He's looking to tuck it. He's looking to tuck it. it makes a nice move, just hangs on and keeps pulling and gets into the end zone. What a plus today for Mike Ayers. Again, the quarterback that was... Replaced because of an injury by Brad Summers. Comes in for, excuse me, Smothers, who was injured earlier. And the kick is up, and it is good. Matt Martin gets the extra point and lines it through. And with that, Walker does exactly what they really needed to do. That, of course, is to put some points on the board. Now, Five plays, 46 yards. Want to just look ahead real quick. They'd score a touchdown. 
over. VMI had possession first. If you're Coach Mike Ayers, you go into the locker room, you're down 10-7, you know what you can say? Hey, guys, we scored this last possession. We get the possession first. We can take the lead if we put on another, another nice drive and get in the end zone. Wow, some interesting scores from the other Southern Conference games. App State and Clemson, 3-3, 13-40 to go in the first quarter. William & Mary and Georgia Southern. Wow. Georgia Southern leading 13-0. Maybe the other way around. We're not sure of that not reach. Not sure about that yeah. one. 115 to go. Of course, William and Mary, one of the best Division One AA teams in the country. Jimmy Laycock's done a great job with that tribe outfit. Elon playing East Tennessee State today, too. We'll check on that William and Mary and Georgia yeah, we Southern. We're not sure how which team has the lead there, the way it has been given to us here. Well, with the touchdown and the extra point by Wolford, as this crowd buzzing a little bit here at halftime before... The kickoff is coming again by Martin. Georgia Southern does have the lead, 13 yeah. nothing. Nice go on Eagles. Well, that would be a huge win. Phil Johnson, a offensive coordinator and two of their national championship years at 85-86. Trying to do a number on the second-ranked team in the country, William & Mary. Mm. William & Mary just pounded, I believe it was Hampton last week, 31-6. Swiver. Played up short. That's White. And a big fullback will carry it out to the 36-yard line. They'll stop the clock with 31.3 seconds to go. If that ball gets anything over and above about three and a half feet off the ground in this last 31 seconds, I'll be very, very shocked. <laughs> yeah, I think I would be too. <laughs> Williams, the fullback, will line up. Lester, the quarterback, who again makes his 34th start of the year, or excuse me, of his career, a four-year starter for VMI. Hopkins is the tailback. He is throwing. I'm going to be shot. And they're going for broke. Down the cross. Just out of his reach. Oh, my. Kane is pulling up some magic across the way. And I tell you what. That is within one more stride of being a huge play of the game. Well, let me tell you something else that Wofford needs to be concerned about. The tight end going down the middle was open, too, and Lester had his choice of where he wanted to throw it. He threw it to the outside, man, and you know what? You're right. One more step, and uh, he's in the end zone. Good gracious. Gutsy call, <laughs> to say the least. To Ray Frost, just a freshman out of Chesapeake. Top track star as well in high school, so he had some strides, but again, Lester just overthrows him. Clock has 23.4 seconds to go. It is still stopped and will not start until the snap of the football as VMI had deployed, but now goes back into the huddle. Like we said, the ball probably won't stay on the ground here. He's going to throw it. <laughs> I'm not saying another word. <laughs> If it gets more than three and a half feet off the ground on this play, I'll be surprised. Well, here we go. Mm. Hopkins. Well, two and a half feet off the ground anyway for Hopkins. As he carries it out to the 35-yard line. And that'll probably do it as VMI will head for the huddle. And with a 11, 10, 9, that'll be the uh, end of the first half. So VMI jumping out to a 10-0 lead. Walford coming back with a huge, huge play for them, taking it 46 yards for a score. And they've tightened it down to an excellent start for Walford, for Mike Ayers, and for Ted Kane getting off to a good start for VMI. Both will head to the locker room. Ted Kane will visit with Matt Swarad coming out in just a moment. Interesting start to the game. VMI interception, 55-yarder, got them up by 10. A gutty uh, performance by Walker to get themselves right back in it here. Yeah, I tell you what, the Walker defense needs to be commended and a great job by Brian Davis coming off the bench to get the ball into the end zone. Matt Swarad has Ted Kane corralled down on the sideline. Let's get his thoughts of the first half. Matt? I'm here with Coach Kane, a VMI coach, a tremendous first half on the road for your first ball game, leading at the break. Well, it's a very close ball game. I think uh, both teams were ready to play, and, uh, you know, it's been a very good first half of football. Guys up in the booth kind of surprised, airing it out with about 30 seconds to go. Interesting play, almost got it. Well, we, uh, uh, you know, right there at the end of the half, you want to try to take a shot at something like that, so we did, and, uh, you know, we hope to uh, continue with our good defensive play. I know they scored here late in the half. We kind of backed up in poor field position and uh, kind of played it close right there, but uh, I think it'll be a good second half. Best of luck. Thank you for your time, Matt. Thank you. Coach Kane, let's go back upstairs now to Sam and Chip. Matt, the key word there is not surprise, shot on the pass that they try to go for the touchdown at the end of the half. The two teams heading to the luxurious locker rooms here at Walford College, designed by the Carolina Panthers. It's 10-7, VMI leading on Southern Conference football. 
vigor, that momentum, that confidence, that excitement. Walford is such a place. I'm from Thibodeau, Louisiana. I'm Huntington, West Virginia. Cincinnati, Ohio. Walford was it by a long shot. I've really been impressed with the way professors and students interact. Walford's more than three hours a day in class. It's family. I looked for electricity. I knew this place was alive. I knew this was a high voltage college. Welcome back out to Spartanburg, South Carolina, Southern Conference football. What a first half as VMI on the road, spoiling Wofford's entrance into the Southern Conference, if you will, at 10 to 7, but still a lot of football left. Matt Swaride back here on the sidelines. Earlier today, Sam Smith had a chance to talk to David Wood. He's the athletic director at Wofford. Interesting conversation as they move into the Southern Conference here at Wofford. Let's go to that piece. David Wood, athletic director at Walford College, and uh, the graduation rate here for your football team and athletics in general, I know is something you're very, very proud of here. Well, it certainly is. Uh, as you know, we, we graduated our athletes at a 90% rate during the last reporting cycle. Uh, that's uh, number eight in the country among Division I schools, and uh, we've been doing that for years here. We expect to continue it. It's because we've got high-quality student athletes that are students first, as it should be. You're stepping up as a small college and, and stepping into the big ranks here. Your thoughts on that? Well, uh, we're a liberal arts institution, and uh, we have about 300 athletes like most schools, whether they have 1,000 students or 20,000 students. So um, we're not concerned about the size of the institution as a factor. It's the quality of those w young women and men. David, the step into the Southern Conference, your thoughts behind that? Tremendous for Wofford College. It's a great league. Uh, it's, it's an ideal uh, setting for us, no doubt about it, in every way, shape, or form. We could not be more pleased to be a member of the Southern Conference. Welcome back out here at halftime. It's been a great first half of football. Sam Smith again talking with David Wood, the athletic director at Wofford. He also had a chance to talk to the Wofford College president, Dr. Joe Lassane. It was, again, a great move to the Southern Conference. Here's Dr. Lassane's thoughts on it. Dr. Joe Lassane celebrating his 25th anniversary or 25th year as the president of this fine college, and what a proud day it must be for Walford College. Well, we're delighted to, to have this opportunity to be a member of the Southern Conference. Uh, it's been a great conference historically, and we've got a lot of our old competitors and rivals in it, and we are really looking forward to being a part of it. You talk about the Gibbs and certainly the Jerry Richardsons and all the others that are behind this stadium. Uh, it, great, great support for your college. Wonderful support. Uh, we've got a lot of people who are very interested in this college and prove it with their own actions. One of the things about it is that scholar athletes is the name of the game here. Yes, they do play athletics, but being a scholar is number one here. Well, we, we have some awfully good students, and uh, what we're trying to do is to try to prove that you can marry up good academics and good athletics and put them all together in one big ball. Doctor, anything else happening on campus that you're very proud of, maybe away from the athletic program? Well, we've got a lot of things that are going on. Uh, right now, we're working on our technology, and we've made some great project, uh, progress there with the Olin building we've done and a network that's being put in, uh, we've, we've uh, made some real strides in that area. Thanks, Sam. We're at halftime. VMI 10 and Wofford 7. A great first half of football as you watch the band to take the field and finish up their halftime festivities. We're back with more here at halftime from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Welcome back out to Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina at halftime, VMI 10 and Wofford 7. Earlier today, Sam Smith had a chance to sit down with the commissioner of the Southern Conference, Wright Waters, talking about all the new changes here in the Southern Conference for 1997. Right, anytime you talk about expansion in any conference, but when you talk about the way it's been done here at Walford, what a great, great day it is in Spartanburg. Oh, it is, Sam. I tell you what, if you can't get excited about college football today, you better uh, figure out what else is wrong in your life because uh, it's great, and all of the things that we knew good were going to happen with the expansion are coming through, and I think people are going to see Greensboro coming in this year. It will be a factor in every sport right away, and then College of Charleston comes in next year and uh, just takes the league to a new level. When 
you talk about the football game, it's the first conference game, certainly, for both these schools, but playing in this beautiful new stadium. It, it's great, but uh, what pressure on both these coaches. One of these guys is going to get their first conference win with the tiebreaker now. You know, somebody's got to win, so it'll be fun. What do you think of expansion? We've, we've talked about the spring sports being a very viable part of the expansion, and certainly Walford figures in there. Absolutely. When you look at the three schools that we've added, Greensboro, Charleston, and Walford, we were looking at it, not very honestly, not so much from a football perspective, but for what they could do for the league and both media shares, uh, keeping the parameters of matching academically, athletically, and geographically, but improvement to our women's programs, to our spring sports, and uh, particularly to our basketball. And I think people are going to see that in the years ahead, the uh, traditions that we've established in having national success in our sports will only be complemented with the addition of these three schools. Vital comment from you. We just enjoying this expansion, but I'm sure there's even more thoughts of doing even more for the conference later down the road. Well, you never say never. Uh, I think there is a point of diminishing returns, and we would not want to encourage anybody, but uh, we get inquiries uh, every month from somebody wanting membership in our league because they, they understand the history, the traditions, and the quality of schools more than anything else. But at this point in time, it would have to be something pretty significant for us to uh, get much larger than 12. 12. 12 has a lot of advantages to play divisional play, and uh, it's, it's going to make us a pretty solid league. Well, Wright Waters talking about the future of the Southern Conference. Could this youngster right here be a future athlete in the Southern Conference? Well, the future here at Wofford came about with this beautiful stadium because of the family of the Gibbs. And joining Sam earlier today was Jimmy and Marcia Gibbs to talk about the gift that brought this beautiful ballpark. Two very special, Jimmy and Marsha Gibbs, uh, certainly Gibbs Stadium. And I know, Jimmy, first of all, this is quite a proud moment for your entire family here at Walford. Well, it sure is. Very, very proud. As far as the work behind to get this stadium going, uh, talk a little about that, if you will. Well, you know, this has been about a 10-year project. Uh, it started with uh, Danny and Morrison and myself uh, uh, sort of thinking about revamping just part of uh, Snyder Field. Uh, that evolved into uh, a couple years later of doing the whole field and stadium. And then uh, later on uh, came Mr. Jerry Richardson with his dream with the Carolina Panthers, and that sort of put us on a fast forward, and uh, this is what led to reality here. Marsha, one of the things, always a great lady behind all of this, I know the whole city of Spartanburg has really jumped behind this project, haven't they? They sure have, and it's just, just been just wonderful. Your thoughts of uh, possibly 10, 11,000 people watching this game today? What a great day it is. It sure is. It really is. I know you're Father Razor would have really been happy with this whole situation of 17 Letterman here at Walford and uh, Gibbs Stadium. This would have been a proud moment for him too, wouldn't it, Jimmy? Uh, yes, it is, but I think what we need to focus on is uh, this was built for the present and the future, not the past. So, uh, even though I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my father, but uh, this is for the Walford family, not my, not my family. Marsha, one final question for you. Any further plans for here at Walford? Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Congratulations to you. Well, thanks, Sam. A great first half of football. We're looking forward to an even better second half. It's a sun-drenched day here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. At halftime, it was uh, VMI having a very solid first half, but it was a 10-0 lead that the Terriers came back on, so it's certainly not all lost for the Terriers this afternoon as they open their Southern Conference play here in 1997. At halftime, VMI 10 and Wofford 7. We'll come back with more halftime festivities from Gibbs Stadium right after this. Welcome back to Southern Conference Football, back here at beautiful Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg, South Carolina, as we have the Walford Terriers opening up their first game ever in the Southern Conference, trailing by three to the Keydets of EMI. The Keydets, the oldest team in the conference, Walford, of course, the newest. Well, halftime statistics, it was very close early on. Finally, a uh, return of an interception by VMI gave them a 10-0 lead. As again, at the halftime, let's take a look at some of our stats for the first half. First downs, Walford again trying to use their ball control at 9-6 there. Look at the rushing yards compared to that of VMI. 154 yards for Walford in the game. 169 total, 97 total for VMI, despite the fact that they have the lead. Turnovers, the big key, two fumbles, interception against Walford, and the time of possession 
Walford has that, but the three turnovers chip a real big key, certainly in this game, with two fumbles and that interception for a TD by BMI. Well, two of the turnovers, of course, one of them leads to the touchdown immediately, but then another one probably took away a touchdown when they had to fumble going yep. in close. So you can really see that that's a key part of this football game. And we mentioned turnovers before the game started, that you just can't have turnovers. You know, the old adage is you lose more games than you win, and you got to be real careful about not losing one when you're trying to win it. <laughs> the highlights of the first half, of course, BMI, as I made mention, a 49-yard field goal by Mike Harris got him up 3 to nothing, and then the interception. It was a 55-yard return, and Mr. Thornton knew what to do after making that intercept. Yeah, he really read the quarterback's eyes real well. The pass a little behind the receiver, and then Thornton, who we mentioned, has got great speed. He knows what to do with the football, and he heads for the land of milk and honey. VMI, of course, took that 10 to nothing lead. Looked very uh, bad for Wolford, but boy, after field position, forced VMI to kick out of their end zone. Watch these plays as, again, Davis, who had carried it almost virtually on his own, scores for Wolford. Yeah, they had been running the play to the right side where it was looking like an option but he was tucking the football under most the whole time and then they ran into the left and he got into the end zone and it was a big score for Wofford and puts him in the football game now really in the football game because they get the ball first to start the second half. Martin added the extra point and thus our score 10-7 to here at halftime. We had talked about cooler temperatures here but it did start warming up just before the kickoff time and therein lies the probability of some other things of how well these two teams have prepared themselves in their fall drills. So a little conditioning and depth may come into play in this second half. Well, the depth for both teams, I think, are on opposite ends. For Wofford, it's in their offensive line and in their backs. For VMI, it would be in their defensive line and possibly their defensive backs, but mostly their defensive linemen. So you've got strength against strength working in this game, which is the reason, obviously, that people like Ted Kane wanted to keep his offense on the field as much as he can and why uh, Mike Ayers wanted to have his offense put points on the board and continue to score. It may take its toll because it is a little warm at, down there. In fact, I just got back from down there. It's a little warmer than I thought it was going to be. Dan Williams, the All-American for Walford, coming out of conversation as they try to get their game together. And we'll get our game together for the second half as we'll kick it off in a moment. Keenan's 10-7 lead. Sam Smith, Chip Tarkington, along with Matt Swarad, welcoming you back to Southern Conference Football on Fox Sports South. One of the guys in the center of the line for Walford is a guy that everybody's looking at right there, Dan Williams. He's a guy that has been called the top prospect in the Southern Conference. Chance to talk to him before today's game. Uh, my freshman year, we're here in Division II. We're way over there in the old locker room, the old field. And as you can see, it's... Uh, been great improvement from Division Two to Southern Conference now, and from Snyder Field over here to Gibbs. It's going to be great. We're going to have a, a very large crowd here today. Beautiful weather outside. We're just ready to get Southern Conference competition underway. So Dan Williams, quite excited about today's game. He came into the, they say he weighs 325. They say it may be closer to 45 than 25. Also said, hey, it's going to be a hot day. I'll lose 15, 20 pounds. But he said, it'll be well worth it. Let's head back downstairs. Matt Swarad with uh, Mike Ayers. Thanks, Sam. I am here with the coach of Wofford, Mike Ayers. Coach, your first game of the Southern Conference, down three at halftime. Great way to come back late in the game. Well, we did a nice job of responding. Uh, we were just showing too much uh, Southern hospitality to VMI, giving them too many gifts. Um, Hopefully from here on out we'll make them earn it, but uh, our kids have played hard. We've had some, uh, some mistakes, and, and again, the, the turnovers are the big thing we've got to eliminate. If we do that, continue to tackle well, I think we got on track offensively, we'll be all right. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. Mike Ayers, the head coach of the Wofford Terriers, so his trail at halftime 10-7. For the second half, let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Matt. Nice job at halftime, by the way. You kind of get the feeling, Chip. Uh, Mike Ayers is the kind of guy that don't go to him with your hand out expecting something for nothing. You better earn everything you get from Mike Ayers. Uh, you can tell he wasn't happy about the turnovers. I'm sure he had a discussion with the gentleman at halftime about that. But he's right. I mean, they really have been very hospitable. You never want to give an opponent anything to jump on when you're in they're in your backyard, and he <laughs> he don't want any turnovers in the second half. And when you consider three turnovers in the first half of the game and still down by only three, he's very fortunate to be in that situation. There's no question about it, and I think he feels fortunate that he's only down by three. It'll be an interesting first possession for Wofford the second half. 
you know, that uh, group of young men and women out here working out a couple hours before the game as well. Back uh, doing some warm-ups and trying to get himself back limbered up once again is uh, Smothers, and we'll see if he's going to start the second half or as well as Davis played. Uh, why, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, so to speak. I, I believe you'll see Davis again in the second half. I, I don't know if he'll start the second half, but I'm with you. He got him in the end zone, and, and obviously the team rallied around him when he came in the ball game. I would think you would see him, but hey, we're not going to guess up here anymore. No, no more. No, 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 no more guessing today. No, the ball went higher than three and a half feet off the ground when VMI threw that long pass. Daniels, along with Wolfel, will try to feel this kick, as it will be VMI kicking off. As the Keydets will give up the football to start this half, and Mike Harris, who had a 49-yard field goal after missing an earlier 37-yarder, in the first half will do the honors here for the Keydets. Sun is just about directly across the field. You can still see those shadows for VMI. This will be a low kick, or at least a short one, fielded by Daniels. He's going to have some good uh, running room, and then finally... It closed down in a hurry. Keydets closing down. Number 47 is Court Whitman was the first guy in there to make the stop for VMI. Special teams coverage, very, very important. By the way, we've just received word now in the second uh, period, Georgia Southern 19-13 over William Mary. That's a whale of a game going down in Statesboro. <laughs> Boy, I t don't you know those Eagle fans are going ape right now? Boy, they're going wild. Paul Johnson said they moved their kickoffs back to 1 o'clock to truly get the home field advantage down on the heat back. Home field advantage for Walford right now has them down by three as they have their first possession of the second half. Wolfel carrying the ball out to the 29-yard line. It's been a play that's worked extremely well uh, throughout the entire ball game, and particularly for one big run as Davis again does do the handoff as Smothers did warm up, but Davis stays in at QB. Defensive stop, Matt Corley. Or Coley, excuse me, in the center of the line from Virginia Beach, Virginia. 6'2", 265, centering that line. He, along with Thomas of the tackles, Douglas and Cook alternate at defensive end. And on the other side is Jordan Clark, who's also been heard from throughout the day. This is Davis. Flag is down as Davis turns the corner. He'll gain about three, but it appeared somebody moved along the line. Oh, I think we got the right side of the line getting a little bit antsy there. Is it, you know, they, they're wound up now. Davis is running the ball north and south. They're wound up wanting to get off that line of scrimmage in a hurry. And again, they get themselves a the motion. Yeah, it's one thing about a down lineman, <clears throat> being a former down lineman as Ann, when you get a quarterback that is running and turning the corner, you get so antsy to get out on the corner yourself, you just start losing a little of your concentration because you say, boy, this guy's running quickly. i got to get out there in a hurry. And that's exactly what's happened here. Illegal motion. Offense. Five-yard penalty. You know what you also realize? That if you're about 280 or 270, it's really nice to hit one of those corners or safeties that only weighs about 180. You can really lower the boom there. <laughs> I, I thank the good Lord I never weighed 280, though, that's for sure. <laughs> After the step off against Wolfer, they have it second down, 11. Back inside their own 25-yard line, the All-American Dan Williams will snap to Davis. Eden's the lone running back. Gets the call, games two. Mike Rogers, truly another great All-American candidate. Number 45 for VMI was there in the hole to make the stop. You know, getting preseason honors and getting the pressure on you, that's kind of tough for some young men to handle, but I think you made a, a good point early on, Chip, is the fact that so many of these guys are so studious. I mean, they really think through a lot of things, and Mike Rogers is one of those guys that says, hey, I know I'm getting the honors, but I still have to do what I have to do. Well, you're dealing with two fine institutions, both on the field and off the field, and I'll tell you what, they're quality people to go to these schools. Third down play, nine to go for Walford. Davis has the two halfbacks split out. He's throwing to the far sideline and a great catch. Reaching up and grabbing it out of the clear blue as they send it out to the far side and we'll get a gain out of it and not enough for the first down. Tim Rayburn, I think, was the receiver that finally sprinted out to get that one on the far side. Good pass here, but just not enough yardage there. Pretty good defense by VMI. Credit where credit is due. Corey Weaver was the man that finally caught it. We had caught 28 out of the corner of our eye because he was coming in on the kick here, but it was 29 in Weaver. Here's the kick. Kale will boom a pretty good one out of there. And Lewis will try to return. Good downfield coverage by the kick team. 
Hopper will not give them much. It'll be first and 10 for BMI. They'll move it outside their 30. And we'll have it about the 33-yard line, first and 10 for VMI, and they continue to huddle on the sidelines here. Yeah, you, know, you know, a lot of schools have gone to this where the first where the first play that you bring in scrimmage on change of possession, you huddle up over there, you get it together, and then you go straight onto the play. By the way, the Terriers, we try to get credit to Tim Rayburn. We do, as he was down covering that punt. 10-7, VMI back in a moment. Welcome back out here. The third quarter, VMI 10 and Wofford 7. Joining me is Don Lucas, the supervisor of football officials in the Southern Conference. Don, a new season in the Southern Conference brings some new rules and also changes with the officials. A seventh man. Right, Matt. We are the third 1AA lead to go to the seventh man officiating staff. And this, of course, being our first year, and we're really excited because it gives us so much better coverage. I know one thing fans are probably interested about. This is opening day for the players. How about the officials? Do these guys just come out and official, or is there kind of a pregame? or a, a preseason for them, if, if you take that word better. Well, actually, the season really never ends. Uh, there's a little bit of a break in the, in the wintertime, but once spring practice starts for the teams, the, the officials start working again because they officiate those spring scrimmages and so forth. Then they have summer clinics at their local associations where they group together in a town such as Greenville Spartanburg. There's four or five officials in this area that'll meet and go over the rules. Then in the uh, summer, or early August, we have our what we call our rules and mechanics clinic. And we've done that the last several years up in Boone where it's cool because they do a physical assessment. They do a... Uh, Three, a series of three agility drills, and then they also do a mile run. And like I say, we have a three-day rules and mechanics clinic and uh, where we go over new rule changes, review the old rules and so forth, and then put in new mechanics and so forth. Oh, Don, thanks for joining us, and good luck this year. Thank you, Matt. My pleasure. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Matt. Al Lister on a little rollout, game three. He's going to have trouble as he throws this one under pressure, but gets it out on the far side. Malloy makes the catch, but boy, what a great rush. That time they got put on as it was Ammons making the uh, rush. And a good job by Lester to get that pass away. Yeah, it was. And you know Torres Ammons is just thinking, yeah. I am so close. <laughs> I had you in my grasp. Here it is again. And you see me just, he's salivating right now. And he just did get that pass off. Nice play by VMI. Coverage out on the outside by Thompson. The linebacker makes the stop. Brings up a third down and three. VMI with Lester, the quarterback. Lone running back. That's White, the fullback. Lester's trying to swing it out to Frost on the near side. Ball is well overthrown. Making sure that he didn't do anything if he did catch it was Rob Stein, who has come and brought his helmet and his shoulder pads for a purpose today. Yeah, he brought everything. I want to update you on a score real quick that may surprise everybody. It's 3-3 three to three with Clemson and App State with four minutes to go in the second quarter. Fourth down, kick time. Greg Allen will have to kick another one away about from his own 30-yard line. Tony Young is the lone receiver back for Walford. The rush was on. Daniels may have got a part of that again. He did. Young's going to field it on the run and will not get past his own 25-yard line, and the flag is down. Potentially a possible face mask grabbing by VMI. Boy, Ellen has had Daniels in his face all day on those punts. You know, he has come so close twice now to getting the entire ball instead of a piece of the ball. <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's another one that's saying, hey, I'm going to get one, I'm going to get one. Oh, man, is that close. And you know the fact that he's getting so close to uh, blocking as well without getting contact on Ellen is another great skill that he has shown so far. Great angle. They did call the face mask, too. I, we mentioned Eric Daniel. Here's a young man who has five just yard played. Five-yard face mask on the kicking team on the return. Five-yard to end the run. First. He's played for three years, and all the coaches will tell you he's one of the most solid players on the team. Doesn't make mistakes, just does little thing after little thing after little thing. Well, Davis will stay out as the QB for Walford. Edens will be the one, one lone running back behind him. The other two halfbacks will be split outside the tackles. Weaver on one side, Wolfel on the other side, and a split receiver split to the far side. Dan Williams, the All-American, being tested and tested well by Matt Coley up front. Handoff goes to Edens. 
and Edens goes absolutely nowhere. On top of the play and crashing in is Jordan Clark, and right behind him is Mike Rogers, the great All-American linebacker. You know, if we get to look at this one again, Cardell Winfield was getting blocked into the play, and he actually kind of got a leg in there, too, just because his man was blocking him. Take a look at this. Top of the screen. Boom. And Winfield is getting blocked right back into the play there. That's the way you get a credit without looking. One of the things also that VMI apparently is doing is they are sending one man after the quarterback now. Yep. No matter if he pitches or what, get somebody on top of him. That time Kelly Cook, the defensive end, was all over Davis. Second down and ten. They try to come back to the near side to Weaver. Weaver to the 35-yard line. They'll give him about seven, but it brings up one of those crucial third down plays for Walford. By the way, last year on third downs, they were about 35% on their third down percentage of picking it up and keep in mind they also went for a fourth down and got that earlier today. Back in is Smothers now. So Smothers will run this on the third down play. It looks like Davis on the sideline looks like he might have injured his shoulder or chest. He's really doing a lot of stretching with his right side. So Smothers who turned an ankle early on in the first half. There's a ball on the ground. It looks like VMI has come up with another fumble recovery. They tried to hand it to Edens on the straight handoff up the middle. Trying to gain that three yards behind the big blocking up front, but Walford is able to unstack with the ball in their hands, and it may have been Smothers that recovered the fumble. Yeah, and it looked like it was Kelly Cook who thought he was going to come up with it. And, you know, if they were to turn the ball over then, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have come to the sidelines. Gotcha. You know, I tell you, Mike Ayers would have met him about the mid midway coming across. It wouldn't have been a pretty picture. Well, he met him about 10 or 12 feet on the field as it was. <laughs> kick time for Walford. Brandon Kale will kick it out of there. He'll get this one turning end over end. May get a hop for him. It does. And now we'll bounce inside the 25-yard line where Walford will down it. And Lewis just ran away from it from VMI, and they'll take over Will the Kedets again at about their own 24-yard line. Nine minutes, 18 seconds to go. Third period, and a 10-7 score still with VMI in lead by three. Dan Williams. By the way, Dan has been given the honorary seat, even though he's not there now, of sitting in front of the Vapor fans they have going on the sideline. He has relegated that spot now to number 52. That's Eric Dole uh, just sitting down to Williams' right as the big All-American center doing his job <laughs> as well as he can so far today. Stack running backs for VMI. Lester, the quarterback. White, the fullback. He's rolled under right at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing. In the center of that line for Walford. First man through to drop him down is Thomas Tinch. Tinch has had himself quite a day today out of Calhoun Falls, South Carolina. 6'2", 270. And he is a young man that uh, was a part-time starter last year and starting to draw more nods this year. We, we mentioned all the different formations that VMI is in. La that last play, they were an unbalanced formation. They had the tight end, the split end, and flanker all to this left side of the field. Going different sets. Holland, the wide receiver, to the near side. He's just out of your camera range there. As Lester's looking for it. And it's intercepted. Just picked out of the sky, and he's going to take it down to the one-yard line. No touchdown. With the intercept is Jason Rowe. The junior from Miamisburg, Ohio, intercepts and runs it in, but there's a flag down. And we'll see if it's going to go against Wolford or not. The interception as Lester tried to get it out on the near side to Holland. Picked off and run in as he just broke the plane at the goal line. The personal foul stand will stand. Yeah, personal foul called against BMI. I tell you what, that is some kind of play by Jason Rowe. It, it, he w I think he was in the huddle on the play. Yes, he saw the whole thing coming. Jason Rowe on the intercept. There may be a penalty assessed on the kickoff. Personal foul on the white team during the run back after the interception. That penalty is going to be declined. They declined taking it on the try. It's going to be a try from the three-yard line. So they will just absolutely decline that one as expected with 8.29 left to go. In the third and intercepted by Jason Rowe. And all of a sudden the home standing Terriers have a three-point lead and try for the extra point. Martin will try to get the extra point. High snap. 
having to run for the two on the near sideline and breaking the plane and making it, diving into the end zone for the Terriers is Rob Stein, who seems to be all over this field. Was the holder, got a bad snap, and then he was in a peck of trouble and runs it in for the score. Well, you've seen two outstanding individual efforts by a couple of Wofford guys. Stein on the two-point try, and Jason Rowe with the interception to take the lead. And it's a five-point lead. And Stein again alertly carries it in. Almost looked like he wanted a pass, but at the last moment dove in. And it's 15-10. Walford with the lead on Southern Conference football. Back at Walford. Going to look at the two-point conversion. Take a look at this. We talked about some, some great individual efforts. I want you to watch Rob Stein. He's made some big defensive plays today. But, Sam, this is really a nice play because he held everybody for just a minute. He froze them just by raising his arm like he was going to throw it. And he, he wasn't going to throw that ball. He was going to run it. <laughs> he did froze uh, Cornell Lewis and finally took it uh, in for the 26-yard and the interception. Church Powers is the new kickoff man here for Wolford. And he booms one in over in. VMI trying to bring it ahead, and with the return is Darius Jackson stepped in front of Hopkins. And Jackson brings it out to the 25-yard line. First and 10 for VMI. First time they have been trailing in this football game now after jumping out 10 to nothing on a 49-yard field goal by Mike Harris. An interception by Thornton for 55 yards. Davis ran for a score before the half for Walford to make it 10-7. And now Jason Rowe, 26-yard interception, two-point extra point by Rob Stein. And it's a 15-10 Walford lead. Turnovers. When's the last time you saw two interceptions return for a touchdown? It's been a while. Two You're big right. ones. One on each side, 55 and 26. Lone running back is White. Lester now has a little more pressure on him to make something happen for BMI. He throws over the middle. He's got the big tight end. This time it's Tom Boyer. Boyer out of Richmond, Virginia, makes the catch and takes it ahead for about an eight-yard gain. We mentioned that Robbie Chenault over on the sidelines. Don't be shocked to see him come into the ball game. He may be of the two a little better of a thrower of the football. We may see him before it's over with, but I don't think that uh, Coach Kane is upset with the way that Al Lester has played. I think he's beginning to get more confidence as he goes along. Didn't like the air that was under that football that was intercepted a moment ago. But he threw it on a string that time for a good gain. Hand off to White, the fullback. No place to run as the Terriers just simply clog the entire right side. Thompson, Jones, and Young all on that side. Along with the down lineman up front of Langston, Combs, and Allen's just making it hard to run. As they get it out to the 35, it'll bring up a third down and two. Chanel, the one in the middle without the headgear on. And you know, a lot's probably running through that young man's mind right now. Fine, fine high school football player, and he can wing it. Third down and two. Important down for VMI. They pitch back to Hopkins. Forward progress will tumble him outside and up for the first down as he gains nearly four in the play. And it up for a first down for the Kidets. And an interesting time for Ted Kane and his group. It's new for them as well. New personnel, new system. And on the road here at Walford with all the excitements going on around here. Here we go with the unbalanced line again. You get a tight end and a flanker back and a split end all to the right side. That's where the pitch goes. And they're just saying, Avi, get as far as you can. You know where the stick is. We need a first down. Joe Warner made the last stop. A young man out of Cincinnati, Ohio for Walford. First and ten. Lester's back to air it out again. Under pressure. Under throws. Intercepted. Diving for the intercept on the far side is Travis Cash. And Walford has come up now with their second turnover of the day. And another interception here as Lister was hit just as he released that football. I think it was Louis Black that got, got a mid up on him. And it's hard to throw when somebody's clawing a hold of you, especially when they weigh 285 pounds. Here we go. Thomas Tench, I think, is the man. But nonetheless, a great interception by Cash. As he rolls it into the 40-yard line, and boy, you talk about a turn of events of this football game. Drastic turn, and once again, the big turnover is the culprit. And even though, with the pressure put on Lester that time, Chenault may be getting a call in just a moment. Davis is back in. Oh, my. A tough hit that you could hear all the way up in our press box and on our field mics, as they would not let... Uh, 
any kind of yardage be gained up the middle as Edens really ran into a stone wall. You, you, no surprise who hit him, is there? Mike Rogers. Oh, my goodness. We're going to see this in the middle. Watch Big Dan trying to get down low, digging out, rah, 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 all button in there, and look at all these people, bodies flying every which way. That's what's good stuff there. <laughs> That's going to be a takedown. Hey, now there's a two-point conversion there. <laughs> Billy Thomas coming away with that. No gain on the last play, second down and ten. Local will carry it to the 45. Rolled outside the 45-yard line by Wickfall. The corner on the right side, young man who hails from Newport News, Virginia. He was a red shirt last year, so he's quite excited to be on the corners along with Darius Jackson. Jackson, who won the Southern Conference 100 meters last year in 10.8, has some excellent speed on those corners for VMI. Third down. Another one of those big downs of three yards needed by Walford. 5-27, third period. They lead by five. Davis. Oh, late pitch. They've got the first down. Wolfel takes it out of bounds on the far side. And I tell you what, when a quarterback has to pay the price, Davis did just making that pitch at the last second. I'm not so sure you wouldn't call that a left-handed throw as far as he had to pitch that thing. My goodness, that was at the absolute last second. And, you know, they don't want that uh, difference between the quarterback and the running back to be that far. But that was a pretty long pitch there. Can put, give him a completed pass on that right. one. Gaining some yards on that baby. First down and 10 to go, Wolford. VMI stacking the five linemen, four linemen, and a linebacker up on the line. Fake, and here comes Davis. This was a big play for him in the first half. He's chased out of bounds and knocked down. He does roll and then rolls out of bounds with a clock will wind. It'll stop for the resetting of the change. And, boy, Davis has kind of turned it up a notch again here in the second half. Quick score to get in at halftime. Georgia Southern leads William and Mary 25-17. What a big, big game that would be for the Eagles. How about that 6-3 score, Appalachian State leading at Clemson and Death Valley in the first half. There are some unhappy Tiger fans in Death Valley. Ooh. Tommy West may be going crazy in that Clemson locker room at halftime. Jerry Moore may be doing somersaults. No, maybe not. Back to throw. Smothers. He's throwing for Wolfel over throwing. As he was behind the defense, Andre Thornton was the deepest man. Little confusion back in that secondary. And Wolfel was open, but that time they just aired it out too long and Smothers overthrows him. Well, we talked about rotating all the backs. That, that same thing at quarterback for, for Wofford. Now. Davis is going to come in now. Smothers will come out. And, and they just, they're just they shifting bodies in and out, which really confuses the defense. You don't know what which backs are in, who's going to do what. Now, the quarterbacks, they're pretty similar. Doesn't make a whole lot of difference one way or the other with them. Davis again back in, checking off at the line of scrimmage. Tight end split slightly out to the left side. Man in motion to the near. Davis with a late pitch to Weaver. Weaver will try to turn that corner on the outside. Good support by VMI. And uh, Mahika will come up to make the stop on the corner. Jose hailing from Virginia Beach in uh, Virginia. One of two freshmen to letter last year at VMI in 1996. Good defense there by VMI. That's the way you play the option. If you've got somebody to stop the quarterback and you've got somebody out on the pitch, man, you know what? There's not a whole lot of places you can go. Use the sideline as another body. Good defense by the Kedets. Third down, six yards to go for Walford. 15-10 leaders, 4-11 to go on the third. Davis again, as he did earlier, checks off at the line of scrimmage again. Eames with the carry to the 20. Now to the 19, make it the 18-yard line. As Wolford with that great blocking up front. Williams, Cole, and Nash on the right side did their job. The offensive line for Wofford, which has been together now for a while, everybody back from last year beginning to assert themselves here in the second half. They are really creating some big holes. When you got some big guys up there, you should create some holes, and they're beginning to do that. Nice trap play there. The three of four mentioned, 325, 290, and 314. So they do take up some real estate. Aiden's dives down to the 15. On the first down play, games four. Second down, six yards to go. Wolford, of course, fumbled the football down inside their 10-yard line. What looked like to be an early score in the first half. And VMI should hope for the best right now because Wolford has certainly turned the momentum of this game around. No question. VMI's defense has got to find a way to make something happen. They need to create a turnover. And, and granted, uh, Wofford in the first half was awfully generous. They're not being as generous here in the second half. But VMI's defense needs to make something happen. 
Davis remains in at QB. Hand off up the middle is the second back. That time is Lane. Lane along with Edens alternating in and out at fullback. Wolfel and Hunter at one side, Weaver and Odin on the other. They will alternate a lot. The two tight ends, Lockhart along with Brightbill, will also alternate at tight end. All right, let's look at Big Dan Williams again here. Here we go. Cleaning one side out. Didn't get all of him, but no. <laughs> I think that's another takedown in wrestling. He loved to turn up one of those cornerback safeties, any of those small guys. I'll give Mahiko about a 9-5 on the dive, though. <laughs> Davis, again, they come back. On the inside, hand it off. And they try to carry it all the way down to the five-yard line. They get it down inside as carrying the football is Will Hunter. Hunter gained 296 yards and scored four times last year. A sophomore, 5'10", 201. You know, their running backs look like cookie cutters. They really do. All of them right around that 2'5", uh, 2'6". Two two all of them about the same height. Here we go again. This is just that back cross buck is what it is, and they lead with the full bank going in there just looking for anybody, and back goes to the hole. First and goal to go for Walford at the four-yard line and leading 15-10. 2.13 to go. Again, they give it to Lane. Lane will abruptly get to the three and then find the forward progress is totally gone. Up on the line of scrimmage that time is Cornell Lewis, number 26, leading the way to make the stop for the Cadets. Second down, goal to go. They will spot it near the three. This In the second half, the one thing that Coach Kane did not want to happen is happening. His defense is staying on the field entirely too long. Right. And we mentioned that depth situation and also how well they prepare themselves conditioning-wise. Second down, goal to go. And they give it straight ahead, and Lane dives it in. Wolford jumps out to six more points, leading now 21-10. to 10. One minute and 31 seconds left to go, and Mike Ayers apparently says, let's go for two, as he will keep his offense on the field. 12-play, 61-yard drive, and it was an impressive drive. There's a touchdown right there. Notice how he's had both hands on the football he diving did. through that hole. So lining up for two after the celebration on the touchdown, the Terriers will go for a deuce. Fake the handoff, come back on the inside of the Weaver. Two-point play is good. So one two-point running play for the extra point was by accident. This one by design. And with that, Walker jumps in the lead 23 to 10. A touchdown at the end of the half. An interception at the start of the third, and now adding another. And the momentum is certainly going the little more, going certainly to Walford here in the third period. And the crowd out here opening up Gibbs Stadium for their first full season of play. Here at Gibbs, certainly having themselves quite a day. We'll be back with a kickoff as VMI will get it back. Now trailing in the game by 13. We return to Spartanburg on Sports South right after this. Walford with already 228 yards rushing. Finish it off as Lane finds the hole and takes it home. Three-yard run. That's nothing but straight ahead running right at you, and he gets into the zone. Of course, he knows how to get into the end zone. He scored a lot of touchdowns here in his career at Walford. 23 unanswered points. Ted Kane on the other side says, fellas, keep your head up. We're still in the game, down 23-10. Wofford scores 23 unanswered points. Yep. Wow. That is a comeback. Church Powers will kick off again here for Wofford. Soccer style gets it down deep to Hopkins at the four. Runs to the back of the wedge, brings it out to the 25-yard line where VMI... Well, take over first and ten. Scoring drive. Again, another good one here by Wolford. And this is Wolford football. Twelve plays, 61 yards, 509. And you made a mention they have really taken over in the possession of today's game. Yeah, right now, VMI with 18 minutes and 7 seconds. And Wofford has jumped up to 25 minutes and 22 seconds. So they have taken over the clock, which is a big factor for them to win. You've also noticed something that's happening here to Walford as well as VMI gets set up. I'll touch on that in a moment. Here's Lester. Over the middle. Gets it complete again for the big tight end. And Boyer brings it out near the 30. Walford is now drawn in the passing strings. They're back to their 
original thought to just keep the ball on the ground and grind it out. The interception, of course, gave them a big lift, and now a big play has got them in the lead by 13 as VMI gains six on the last play, make it five, and they've got a second and five. Might see a lot of the two tight ends for one back now because they may start putting the ball in the air a lot. Lone running back for VMI is White. He gets the call to the line of scrimmage after the 31. Third down, four needed for VMI. Center that defensive line. You can see a lot of the free safeties, the corners right up on the line of scrimmage trying to hold off any charge ahead by the Cadets. Well, this changed the defensive scheme just a little bit. You're right, they have brought some more people up, which is why the tight end was open to play before. They're bringing some extra people up and just trying to stop VMI early. Ben Day along with John Morton in at linebackers now. Lester back to throw, throws it at tight end again, and Boyer really got nailed by Ben Day just as the ball got to him. It might have gone to the well once too often there. Now VMI, they cautiously wait to get their kicking team on and now they'll bring it out and the crowd is up for the defense for the Terriers and Mike Ayers is the one of the cheerleaders meeting him coming off the field Ellen will have to kick the ball out from about his own 20 yard line Tony Young is the lone back to receive for Walford Rush is on they got close this time a towering kick Young will make the fair catch and then has to pounce on top of it at about the 37. All over him back there. Good coverage by the Kedets. First man down there was Jake Hickman. Interesting enough, the deep snapper for the last three years down covering that punt. And he's been a good deep snapper for, the, for three years. I mean, he has had very few bad snaps. I mean, most of them have been right on the money. Take a look at this again. We almost had a rough in the kicker call. It was pretty good contact that time. Yeah, it was. He might have got a piece of it on the other side. Steve Lindsay making contact with Ellen. No call, and Walford takes over the football. First and ten. Hand off straight ahead, and a diving play by Edens. Gets it out to the 40-yard line, and with that, the third period is now in the history books. So a new chapter being written in Southern Conference history here in Spartanburg as the newest member of the conference, Walker the Terriers, beating the oldest member of the conference, VMI, and the Terriers are fighting them 23 to 10 after three. Fox Sports South back once again with Southern Conference football again this year. And the nice thing about it, the Southern Conference becomes a very important product for Sports South. Jamie Kimbrough talks more about it at halftime. Jamie, a nice thing about uh, Fox Sports South out of Atlanta is that the Southern Conference is a very vital part of what you put on week to week. Sam, it really is. You know, we cover the South pretty much blanketed, and, and it just fits right in with where the Southern Conference schools are. I mean, it's a perfect fit. There are a lot of great Southern Conference fans in our viewership area, and frankly, it's just it's a good fit for our network. And I think with seven national championships coming out of this conference, adds a little credence there, too. Well, I think so, too, and, and we get some great crossover games with other conferences, but within this league, I mean, you look at what we got here today with Walford and VMI, I mean, in a perfect football Saturday. If you don't like this, you don't like college football. The beautiful part of it, the Southern Conference schools, the venues you have to shoot, they're just absolutely spectacular. Well, they really are. I mean, you look at Furman, you look at this facility, I mean, you look at uh, Georgia Southern, I mean, there's just so many great ones. you got the Dome at East Tennessee. I mean, it, it, it's a first-class league, first-class people, and it's just a real privilege for us to be involved with the conference. And it uh, carries over from the football season as well. Well, it really does. Uh, in basketball, you know, we do the most of the Southern Conference tournament. We have games during the year, and uh, like I said, it's just it's a great fit for our network to have a Southern Conference as a major part of our package. Well, the Southern Conference, you've just seen uh, Mr. Thornton come up with another fumble recovery for VMI. He intercepted for a touchdown earlier, and VMI trying to throw for a pass to the near side, and they've got Holland. He catches it just before going out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Well, Lester was really dumped as he got that away. Richard Holland's making the, uh, inter the completion, and it's going to be enough for the first down for VMI. What a big turnover again it was. Yeah, and you know who caused the turnover? Mike Rogers with a hit. I tell you what, he's, he's all over the place too. He's fun to watch play. Do you notice how VMI had a couple of people open on that? That's so throwing it back to the opposite side of the field. Let the two uh, wide out in the tight end. Let them come back and drag across the field and boy you can get a lot of things that will open up. They kind of slip and slide and sneak in the backside. Richard Holland is listed as a freshman. Did not play last year. 5'11", 170 making that last catch. 
Lister throwing again, this time to Malloy, the tight end. He's taken off his feet that time by Tony Young out of Union, South Carolina. He had a, a load on his hands, though, as Malloy, 6'4", 235 from Washington, D.C., rambles down to the 23. You're starting to see a lot more of the passing game with VMI right now. Of course, if you're down by 13, you're in the final stanza. You've got to do that. But VMI obviously will have a good passing game. It may not all be in now, but it will be in soon, and they will be a much different offense to contend with. Passing game, not their forte in the years gone by. Maybe it's starting to come to full blossom. They need it down by 13. Hand off to White. Look at him pull away from tackles, but as he was detained just for the last moment trying to drag out of a tackle by Scott Jones, he got uh, rescued away by four or five other of the Terriers. It'll bring up a third down play, and they'll need, after a, actually about a loss of a half a yard, they'll need nearly four yards for the first down. Well, you're in four down territory now. Field goal won't do you a lot of good. you gotta, you got to get six on the board. Tight end Malloy goes from left to right. They bring the other tight end, Boyer, to the right side. Double tight ends, White the lone running back. Third down and four. Lester to throw. To the far sideline, Malloy had it in and out of his hands, defended by Eric Daniel. That would have been close for a first down in the first place, but that time Malloy just could not hang on as Daniels really hit him right at the point of contact. Fourth down play, four yards to go. They are going to go for a field goal, or will they? Ellen is a former quarterback now. He'll be the holder for Mike Harris. Forty-one yard try. He is going to kick it. It's up and it is good. So a forty-nine and a forty-one yarder now by Mike Harris. As VMI does get at least some points on the board out of that fumble recovery. And with 13-16 left to go in the game now, they're down by 10, 23-13. We're back with more of Southern Conference football in just a moment. Well, welcome back to Southern Conference football, and you can see that VMI has tightened it a bit here. 23 to 13, but 13, 16 left to go as even some of the young cheerleaders are trying to hang in here. Chip Tarkington, first opportunity you and I have had a chance to work. It's nice to be with you this year and enjoying Southern Conference football here on Fox Sports South. Tell you what, we've got a great game today. You know, I think we're going to get into the mind of Coach Kane just a minute. I think he thought that his team just needed to get points of any kind. A little inspirational boost, boost the defense a little bit, and he's got a great kicker. Why not try to get some points on the board? You're still only down by 10. He's got to have two scores, though, to win it or to tie it. That great kicker, Harris will kick off. Lofel down at the goal line. Get put on at the 20 yard line as he carries it ahead, but the door suddenly slams shut on him as VMI down to cover the kick. And again, coming up for the key dance, number 29 is Wigfall. Keep in mind, and we are a long way from being in a tie, 23 to 13 right now. There is an overtime rule in the Southern Conference with each of the teams getting equal possessions from the 20 yard line. By the 25-yard line, excuse me. Scoring drive, five plays, 17 yards. And, of course, the field goal of 41 yards put up by Harris. Davis is the quarterback. They try to knife it to the inside again and try to get some running room. And do move it out over to the 25 to the 26-yard line. Carrying the ball is Eric Oden. Sam, there's more joy in Death Valley. Clemson has gone in front of App State 10-6 to with 9.50 to go in the third. Talking to Jerry Moore on our Southern Conference radio show, he said, hey, I'm taking everybody I got, but it still doesn't match what they have in Clemson. But he said, we're going to go show up. <laughs> and they've showed up well today. 12.35 left to go here in the ballgame now. As the handoff goes to Lane, who scored a touchdown and an extra point earlier, make it just the touchdown, and he gains it out near the 30. Third down, they'll need roughly about a yard, yard and a half for the first down for Walford and the Terriers. Big, big play for VMI. If they can stop Walford here, force Walford to punt the football and then try to get some points back on the board, then the old emotion could turn again. There's still plenty of time left to go. We're still 12 minutes to go in the football game. But this is a big play in the contest. Terriers checking in another tight end. Number 89 is Buff Williams comes in. So they've got uh, another big tight end in there as well on this third down and two. Man in motion. Give it to the second back through. And that's going to be, I believe, Lane again. 
And he'll get it up for the first out, out to the 34-yard line. Well, it's nice to have those big guys that can, you can just get behind and hide and just let them move some bodies out of the way and just keep going forward and push that forward progress. Take a look at this. Not a lot fancier. They pull the guard, and it's just straight ahead and come at you. Chuck Garner along with Josh Harrison. Of course, we've talked about Dan Williams, the center All-American, Eric Cole, and Brian Nash. That's tackle to tackle for the Terriers that have done their job. First and ten to go for Walford. And off, first back through. And again still, Cook going after the quarterback after the handoff. But they'll gain it outside to the 41-yard line. Getting up a little slowly that time was Brian uh, Nash. The right tackle, struggling, and now he's going to come out. They'll replace him in the lineup. You know, it looked like when he first was down and he pulled his, the top of his toe back, usually that means a cramp. Yep. So he might have cramped up a little bit. He throw some fluids in and break that cramp. Second down, four yards to go for Walford. Inside, they bring it back on a little reverse again. Will Hunter. There's a ball loose on the field as they battle for it right at about the 45. And it appears that Walford will once again come up with the football. But again, loose football is flying around this field today with Walford enjoying the 10-point lead in the fourth period. First down. Yeah. Looked like Chuck Garner came down with a <laughs> Chuck Garner offensive uh, tackle. Went to Athens Christian School in Athens, Georgia. You know whose hometown that is? No. Mine. Yeah, Athens. Athens, GA. Okay. Take a look at it. Watch it. It'll show you. He was a good basketball player in high school, too. Look, the ball will come flying. Watch him. Big 79. He knows what to do with it. Catch it. Here it comes. Here it comes. There he is. Well, you saw the part of it. <laughs> Believe me, he caught it. Hunter again trying to slice to the outside for Wolford. And uh, behind the blocking, the aforementioned Chuck Garner. And will gain about two on the play. Second down and eight yards to go. Walford football now coming full circle now as they continue to grind the clock with 9.53 to go. And Mike Ayers anticipating what was going to be an exciting day, trying to keep his kids with their feet literally on the ground. Little hairy as he fell down 10 to nothing, but they have suddenly stormed right back. And after scoring 23 unanswered points, a field goal by Mike Harris at least has given VMI at least another opportunity to get a breath of air. And just grinding that clock, though, Sam, grinding that clock. Aiden's carrying it into VMI territory, down to the 48. One of the things that was going to be a great matchup today was going to be the offensive line of Walford against the defensive line of VMI. Size-wise, there's not a lot of difference there. 292 for Walford, certainly uh, on the other side, uh, 263 for VMI. So it was going to be a matter of that experience for Walford that might take an advantage, and you're starting to see it maybe here. Yeah, the two strengths, Imano against Imano. I think right now Walford is winning the Imano battle in the, in the trenches. Third down, four yards, big defensive play for VMI right here. Trap on the inside, got it up for the first down of the 45. So with the first down for Walford, let's take it downstairs. Matt Suarez going to talk about another ball. This time it's round, Matt. Hey, I'm with Coach Richard Johnson, the head coach of the basketball team. And Coach, it's also a new start for you in the Southern Conference. You've been here for a long time, NAIA, Division II, Division I. Now the Southern Conference, you must be excited. Matt, we're very excited about it. It's a, it's a great opportunity for us. It's a great fit, and uh, we hope to be competitive right away. Uh, I think it's going to take a while, but eventually I think we'll be very competitive in the league. Coach, it's going to be a start of basketball really soon. Your thoughts on your club this year? Very young. Uh, Twelve guys that are in their first or second year, seven newcomers. But once we get these guys in the system and have a chance to work with them, Matt, I think they're going to be very good players for us. They're very talented. Well, best of luck this year, and enjoy the second half. Wofford leading by ten. Thank you, Matt. Let's go back upstairs. Doesn't seem like it's going to be all that long to basketball indeed is around as the football just gets underway. Again, it's almost like a 12-month job to kind of mind-wise to get your programs underway. A penalty stepped off here as they move the ball down into the 43-yard line where it's second down and eight yards to go here for Walford. And an anxious sideline there for VMI. And how about those new unis they got this year with that diamond VMI? Looks almost like North Carolina State. Where, of course, Mr. Kane coached for 11 years. Second down, eight yards to go. Davis at quarterback. Aiden's a running back. 
using his blockers very well. Nice seal down blockers by, in particular, Josh Harrison, number 67, and others. And he just waited for that block to materialize and just came down the line of scrimmage to make the game. Well, I'll tell you what, Wofford is really putting together another solid drive, and they're going to take Edens out of the game right now. They've had third down and short a couple of times, three, four, two yards, and they've made the first down. And they're in another third and short now. If they convert again, VMI's really got to come through in a hurry and make something happen. Less than seven minutes to go in the game. Davis using all of that play clock he can. It's down to nine. Hunter in motion. They give it to the inside man, Weaver. Weaver dancing for another first down. Gets it down inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. And some great balance as he got bumped from one side and was able to keep his balance and dive inside for the first down. Sam, they're going on their 12th play when they come to the line of scrimmage, and they've already taken 634 off the clock. That's what you call ball control, and if they can continue to do it, they can, they can take it the rest of the way. It appears that VMIs want to take a timeout, and they will with 640 left to go. They trail it 23 to 13, another first down for Wolford, and the door is slowly shutting on VMI. They need a break. I'd like to remind you for the next nine weeks on Sports South, Fox Sports South, they're going to enjoy Southern Conference teams competing in college football, and today we kick it off for the 1997 season. First down, 10 to go for Walford. Leading by 10. Lane with a carry up the middle. Chip, two things that we talked about early in the game. Costly turnovers, we're talking VMI. Costly turnovers, they of course have had their share. Keep the defense off the field. They haven't been able to do that. Other side, sustain drives. You see Walford now doing that and avoid the big plays, which they have successfully done today. That's right. The time of possession is really getting scary now. Wofford is well over 33 minutes. VMI is at 21 minutes. 12-minute spread. That's a big difference in the ball game. And they have completely just thrashed them as far as the rushing yardage is concerned. Wofford, very top heavy there. Second best in the country last year. 288 yards. They'll pass that in a heartbeat tonight as Lane takes it down to the 29. Gain of two on the play. Third down. They'll need about five. You know, the amazing thing, too, is that uh, Wofford may wind up with four turnovers today and still win. How many times do you turn the ball over four key times and still win a football game? Wofford running tight ends in and out and wide receivers. Lockhart coming to the huddle. Go! As VMI's sideline anxiously waiting to see if the defense can hold with 5.26 left to go. Another big third down. We've talked about this is the fourth time they've hit third down. Can they convert again? Lane, the lone running back. They fake and hand it off inside to Weaver. Weaver again, weaving his way for potentially another first down. Down to the 24, maybe the 23 and a half yard line. Officials stopping the clock to unstack and may bring the change out for the measurement. You know, I think VMI may have tried to take a time out there, too. It looked like they were trying to call one. First down, Wolford. VMI that took the time out a moment ago knows full well. Now they will take another time out, I believe. Fine run here. Good lead block going in the hole. I tell you what, these, these backs... For Wofford, not only run well, they block well. Will Hunter was a starter as a freshman last year, but of course Robbie Warfel has come back and he's really kind of taken over that position as the starter. But you know what? We've mentioned this. It's interchangeable with these backs. I mean, they've just got so many bodies. Well, BMI taking the timeout to stop the clock at 5.08 to go. They're not celebrating uh, much here. Wofford in the lead by 10 and on the drive again. The Terriers on an eight-minute drive so far with a ten-point lead. Handed off up the middle as they seal it for a couple of yards. Back downstairs to Matt Swarad. Matt? Thank you, Sam. I'm here with Dr. Ted Monroe, who's the faculty rep for Wofford College. And, Dr. Monroe, it's been a very in interesting move for this ball club, this college going from Division II to Division I, now to 1AA. You, as the faculty rep, handle all the things that go with the conference. How's it changed your job? Uh, it's increased it strongly. I have to spend much more time now making sure we're obeying rules and regulations and working closely with the conference, uh, representing us there and helping to decide what's Wofford's vote on uh, legislation coming before the conference and the NCAA. Great way to start your Southern Conference tradition, right? Marvelous day today. Two fantastic schools with long traditions and excellence in both academics and athletics out here on the playing field. Enjoy the final five minutes. Thank you very much. Back upstairs. 
Thank you, Matt. Suarez working with us down on the field, and we certainly have enjoyed his work again today. As again, Walford with a flag down in the middle of the pile after gaining just short yardage on a couple of plays. East Tennessee State's off to a good start today against Eli. They're up 19-0 to with about five minutes to go in the first quarter. I'll tell you what, the Southern Conference team's off to a pretty good start today. Pretty impressive. And we talked about Georgia Southern having the lead over William & Mary. And, of course, Appalachian State uh, again hanging in with Clemson down in Death Valley. Not an easy place to play them any time, but certainly down there with a young team. Jerry Moore whining at the Rouser the other day. You know he's always got some great kids. They'll play hard at Appalachian State, and apparently they've done so today. Let's get the call here. Ten yard offense. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. Referee today, Ron Buckner. So repeat the second down after the penalty is marched off. And, of course, VMI can use all of this. They can stand with 420 left to go on a second down. And roughly about 19 needed here by Wolford. They have not thrown the ball almost in a couple of possessions here. Three to be exact. Flag down behind the play. Lewis will make the tackle of Davis, but a flag is down. Might be another hold. Stops the clock with 3.59 to go. Yep, another hold. Game has moved briskly along with a 12.30 kickoff, and we are now shortly after the 3 o'clock hour. Mike Ayers anticipating what might be a call against his team. I made mention early on that his team averaged about 50 penalty yardage per game uh, last year. Something I know he'd like to cut down a bit. You mentioned the passing situation. Wofford has rushed the ball 63 times today and thrown five passes there. Averaged 288 yards rushing last year. Well, they're 288 <laughs> right now. And they'll be, if they finish this drive, Holding. quite obviously they'll be at uh, 300. It's declined. Third down. So a second holding call, this time declined to use up the down. It'll be a third down. And they will get a gain by Walford. Takes it down to the 27-yard line, but still brings up a third down, and they will need, will the Terriers, about 13. Yeah, VMI is desperate to get the, back, get the football back. They've just got to have it back right, right now. 353 in county. Davis, along with Smothers, have alternated quarterback mostly due to injuries today. Davis is in there and rolls to the right. He does throw. Only the sixth throw of the day. Trying to get it out on the far side, but it's well out of the reach of Jeff Scott. An outstanding uh, freshman out of Daytona Beach, Florida. And it does bring up the fourth down play. Now, Walford more than likely, just if nothing else, to use a lot of the clock. I think they're going to go for this thing. Well, they may as well. Uh, you know, you take some, some things out by... Why, why punt it? Trying to kick a field goal. Too many things could happen that you don't want to have to talk about. Points don't do you any good right now as far as, you know, what's another three going to make any difference? Just keep the ball. You run some more time also by doing that. And also, uh, Matt Martin, their field goal kicker, longest field goal of last year was only 24 yards. This one had to be been over 45. Yeah. They are going to go for it on fourth down. They made one earlier, but it was short. Short yardage. This one's long. Davis in the end zone. He's throwing again, trying to get at the stop. It's just over his wrong shoulder as the secondary. Back there covering again, Lewis, along with Jackson. It's incomplete, and VMI will get offensively another shot at this ball, down by 10. So Lester back in. VMI may have to go to that very quick two-minute offense. <laughs> if you've got it in, you need it. No huddling on the sideline also. They'll quickly huddle right behind the ball in the line of scrimmage on a first down play. The biggest problem there is that Wofford had the ball 17 plays, 53 yards in the air, up 9 minutes and 41 seconds off the clock. Exactly what Mike Ayers wanted to do. Lester the quarterback. White is the lone running back. Wide receivers split left and right. Lester back to throw. Under pressure. Winding and firing downfield. It's intercepted. Buckner coming up with it. I believe that's going to be Daniel. And Eric Daniel has just shut the door on VMI. 3.29 left to go as he intercepts, and the offense will take over again. And Wolford and the crowd of 7,400 strong have enjoyed themselves an afternoon after a hairy start of down by the score of 10 to nothing. 
So as Walford takes the ball, let's take a timeout. 3.29 to go from Spartanburg. 23-10, the Terriers lead the key decks. Sam Smith along with Chip Tarkington in the booth. Matt Suarez down on the field. Glad you could join us on Fox Sports South of coverage of Southern Conference football. VMI, the oldest member, joining in 1924. Walford, the newest, making their debut in the conference today. And Walford has grounded out to a 10-point lead and had the ball back after Eric Daniel has come up with another interception here for the Walford Terriers. Smothers the quarterback and hands it off. They'll try to keep it to the ground. By the way, there's a brand-new helmet showing up on the field for VMI. Matt Swarad has some information on that. Matt? That's right, Sam. You talked about VMI being the oldest school in the Southern Conference. Well, the newest uniforms. Head coach Ted Can coming from NC State, where you see the uniforms of the Wolfpack lately, the diamond-shaped NC State on the helmet, the white helmet. Well, VMI has gone from the old gold helmets to the white helmet, white jerseys with the diamond-shaped VMI. So it's a new logo on the field in a new era in Lexington, Virginia. Back upstairs. Thank you very much. New era in both here in Walford and at uh, VMI as well. Second down. About five, five and a half to go. Edens carries it to the 45 as Walford starts to grind it again. I'm disappointed Matt didn't put that thing on. I wanted to see how he looked with the helmet on. He said, no way, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, for me, a lot of folks would tell me to put the helmet on. I'd look better. Well, particularly if you turn around backwards, man. Uh, that would be the ticket. Never mind. 2.26 left to go. As you can see, the dejection on that VMI side. They came a long way with great high hopes. And, you know, you ran into a club that just simply got their ball handling skills going and uh, did not give up the football, made a couple of big long drives, got the intercept when they needed it. They've run into a club that is going to give a lot of people some trouble here, particularly in Spartanburg. And that's where it is actually put that helmet on. we got to see that in a moment. Edens trying for the first down on the third down, takes it out. They're going to stop the clock and maybe bring that chain to see if it's enough. Let's go back down to Matt. you got to be kidding me. Matt, you got that thing on down there? It actually fits, guys. <laughs> it's a little warm, but i got the cool zone over here. I think I'm going to go walk that way and kind of cool off. Uh, he looks pretty good with that on. He's been hitting the head with too many fastballs, I can tell already. <laughs> Our good friend from the Hickory Crawdads Broadcast Network and certainly on Fox Sports South with his football and basketball coverage. <laughs> it was enough for the first time for Walford. They've got it first and ten, just shy of midfield. A minute 42 left to go, and Walford will be in the book in a brand new chapter of Southern Conference history with a victory. Weaver in motion. Mother's hands it off. Edens will carry it up the middle. And again, just using the clock. VMI out of timeouts. And it winds to a minute 25. You know, we've said a lot of things about Wofford's excitement about joining the conference. But I can tell you the conference is excited about having Wofford in. It is a wonderful school. And this is a beautiful facility. Anybody that's in this area gets a chance to come just see it and come see a game here. I would encourage you to do so. It is really something else. Even, even the Terrier can handle the microphone. Yeah. yeah. We haven't heard from Ruff today but we never know. A minute to go in the game. Second down, nine to go for the Terriers. Brad Smothers, who started, injured an ankle in the first half, replaced by Davis, who spearheaded the offense. Maybe Smothers a little bit more sure-handed on the handoffs. Gives it to Eden. They take it down to about the 46. That'll be shy of a first down with a third down, and they will need roughly about six to go. How sweet is this for Mike Ayers? He's now six and four in opening games here at Wofford, and you know he's just got to be tickled pink inside, and he's got to be proud of the way his kids have played today. I tell you, they have really done a great job. They could have gotten down. After they're down 10 to nothing, they could have hung their heads and just thrown in the towel and let back, but they didn't. They bowed their backs and played great football. By the way, Mike Ayers, a graduate of uh, Georgetown in Kentucky, three years at Newberry in South Carolina, three at Walford as an assistant, then, of course, an assistant for two years at East Tennessee before being the head coach for three years. Ten years ago, Walford made him an offer that he can't refuse, <laughs> and he's still here, and he's grinding it out with that Walford Terrier football. Let's do a little update from Statesboro. Georgia Ooh. Southern leads Wave and Mary 25-23 with two minutes left to go in the third quarter. That's a humdinger, barn burner, anything you want to call it. That's a good game going on down there. We'll see Georgia Southern on Fox Sports South later in the year, and Paul Johnson trying to turn it around. How about Paul Hamilton at East Tennessee State University, another one of the many new coaches coming in, five all told. And we'll get a chance to see all of those coaches and players before the year is all over. 
Here's going to be the third down play and about six to go here now for Walford with only 45 seconds to go in the game. They've used this play well throughout the entire game. Dragging people along the way. Walford gets another first down as they carry it out for the first down and dragging them ahead that time is going to be Oden as he carries him out beyond the stake for the first down. Well, they seal down on that block so well really on the do. inside. They really do. First and ten, Walford. The UMI coaches down to our left are departing for the field. You know the Walford coaches down in the far end have done so earlier as they want to be downstairs when the celebration goes on. And what a day it's been here at Walford as they'll just kneel on this one. How about this one, Sam? First game and you're leading the conference. That's right. <laughs> you guys, I was talking to Mark Cohen, their SID, and I said, think of the headlines you get as they've now won and lead the conference. In their first game as Mike Ayers comes with a victory. He heads across the way for a handshake with Ted Kane in his first year at VMI. And we saw some spark for VMI that we will hope to see more of. We never know. Chanel no! might be the quarterback of the future if Lister can't handle it. You're going to see bigger and better things. And what a great scene it is down on the field right now as the teams lined up across the field. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what it's all about. You fight your heart out for the entire game. You shake hands and say there will be another day. And certainly for these two clubs, there will be on Fox Sports South and certainly in the Southern Conference. What a great day that we've had an opportunity to be part of it here, Jim. Yeah, we sure have. For VMI, they will have a tough game coming up next week. They're on the road at William & Mary. Wofford will get to enjoy this victory for a short while because they don't play again until the 20th, and that's when they play host to Georgia Southern right here, and that'll be a humdinger. That's a night game. That's a 7 o'clock kickoff. So as we're up and one of the young fans here in Spartanburg get to celebrate, we're going to take a brief time out. We'll be back with more of our post-game wrap-up of today, the first win of the Southern Conference for the Terriers of Wolford, 23-13 over VMI. Sam Smith, Chip Tarkington back once again here at beautiful Gibbs Stadium in Spartanburg where they've enjoyed a Walford 23-13 victory in their first ever Southern Conference game. Some of the numbers on the game and our thanks to our statistician Bill English in our booth today along with the official stat crew headed up by Mark Cohen here at Walford and again it turned out to be the rushing game as expected for the Terriers that certainly gave them uh, possession of the football for a long period of time. Well there's a couple of things that just jump right out at you in the rushing yards and the time of possession first downs 20-8 see the rushing yards. Look at that. Wofford with 318 yards rushing. 339 total to 141 for VMI. Turnovers, 3 and 4. How many times do you turn the ball over 4 times and still win? But the time of possession, especially in the second half, 38, almost 39 minutes for Wofford. An impressive, an impressive win. And you know what? Not a single Wofford player has headed toward the locker room yet. They're going to savor this victory. <laughs> All of them are huddled around. Mom and Dad and some of the other folks. This is what's great about college football, especially about this conference. You know, we talked to Mike Ayers before the game and throughout the week, and he said, you know, if we throw the ball more than ten times, I'll be entertaining the fans only. <laughs> they threw only, I believe, six passes today. Make it seven and completed three of those. Had one of those intercepted for a touchdown of 55 yards by Andre Thornton. But other than that, uh, the passing game was kind of non-existent. When you got 318 yards on the ground, why why do anything else? How about Davis? What a day he had today well, as well. Well, Davis had a great day, and he came in at seven rushes for 56 yards. But you mentioned the balanced offense, 73 yards for Michael Eaton, 67 yards for Robbie Wolfel, 35 yards for Brad Smothers. That's four people with pretty good ground coverage. They just did a lot of things correct, especially in the second half. The second half was really an impressive, an impressive second half by this Wofford Terrier football team. And you know, there's no question, they can play in this league. Well, Fox Sports South has brought you another debut of another Southern Conference team today, and they have won here in Spartanburg as, again, the Terriers run it home for the victory, 23-13. We'll be back with more of our post-game wrap-up after this timeout. Southern Conference football on Fox Sports South has been brought to you today by U.S. Airways, the official airline of the Southern Conference. By Interstate, Johnson & Lane. By Reebok, the official shoe and apparel company of the Southern Conference. And by the Greensboro Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. 
Well, it's a final here today, 23-13. Walford wins one of the key ingredients, a quarterback by the name of Brian Davis. He's down with Matt Swarhead. That's right, Sam. I have Brian Davis, who has been the star of this game today. Great second half, Brian. Down at halftime, 10-7. Was there a little bit of a first-half jitters, the first game of the Southern Conference of the club, because they came out with uh, some uh, big play in the second half? Maybe a little first half jitters. We, I mean, we turned the ball over three times in that first half, and the score was only 10-7, so we knew we had a good football team. We knew we had to just go out there and do what we can do best, and that's not turn the ball over and drive the ball downfield. They had no clue, really, how to stop us. We pretty much stopped ourselves, and that shows in the second half how we just drove the ball down there, and they really couldn't figure us out. I mean, the defense, the credit goes out to the defense. They played it behinds off, and they kept us in the game. I kept on telling them, to just, you know, just, just keep us in the game. Just keep us in the game. We're going we're gonna to get going, and we got going that second half right there. Okay, you, you're a player yourself. You came in for Brad Smothers, a great second half. Yeah, I mean, I was injured. I mean, I, I really didn't plan on playing, but when I saw Brad got hurt, I was like, oh, God. But, you know, they gave me a cortisone shot before the game, and uh, it kicked in kind of a little in the second half. And I was worried about the first lick, but it felt pretty good. And I was going to say, well, I'm just going to go this and go and see how it goes. And it worked out pretty, pretty good for me. I scored on that first play, and the team just seemed to respond, and it felt good. We felt us coming together a little bit there. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Don't forget, next week coming up on Fox Sports South, UT Chattanooga will be playing host to Middle Tennessee State. On behalf of Chip Tarkington, this is Sam Smith, also for Matt Swarhead. Hope you've enjoyed it today as it's uh, Brad Smothers along with Brian Davis leading Walford to their first ever Southern Conference victory, beating BMI 23-13. Till next time, Sam Smith, so long for Sports South on Fox.